applicants of arriving outside a city recreation center on November 22nd in response to an emergency call of a man with a gun. Rice was playing with an airsoft-type replica handgun that shoots pellets and died the day after being shot. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's The Onion Radio News. A man on TV urges the mass purchase of Listerine. This is Doyle Redland reporting. In what is believed to be the widest-reaching appeal ever made by an individual on behalf of an oral hygiene aid, an unidentified man urged millions of people across the U.S. to purchase Listerine brand antiseptic mouthwash today. Experts are baffled as to why a person with the power to reach millions would choose to present an oral hygiene-related message. FCC spokesperson Grant Yarborough. Well, this individual should be so obsessed with oral hygiene as to demand that several million bottles of Listerine be simultaneously purchased as baffling. The man, described as a handsome, trustworthy-looking individual in his early 30s, emphatically stressed that Listerine should be purchased over other inferior mouthwash brands. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can join us here on the radio waves. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. And joining you in studio tonight, it's me, Ian. And Daryl. And don't forget, you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. And please enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Uh, Once again, that's freetalklive.com. You can create the content Right there on the front page of the website, you can add in whatever news item, YouTube video, blog post. You find something online you want to share with us, share with our listeners. You post it over at freetalklive.com, and then other listeners can uh, get interactive by voting up or down, whether they like or dislike uh, what you've submitted. So go there, get interactive. Uh, So, And also, our Skype username, by the way, is uh, lrn.fm. News about the Pirate Bay coming from Truth Voice. Dot com, which I think Virgil Vaduva, oh no, excuse me, Andy from Torrent Freak is the writer here. Four key Pirate Bay figures have a little something to celebrate this morning after standing accused of committing criminal copyright infringement and abusing electronic communications. Yesterday, a Belgian court acquitted Gottfried Svartholm, Friedrich Niel, Peter Sund, and Karl Lundström. There can be little doubt that the Pirate Bay is the most infamous torrent site of all time. Its attitude toward copyright and related laws has landed the site and its operators in endless legal trouble for more than a decade, conflict that continues today. Hold on, Pirate Bay has been around for over a decade? Yeah. It's been around for a long time, and they've uh, they've had various different website URLs over the time. Right, I, I knew keep, that. I just didn't realize them. that they'd been around for that long. Yeah, they're the most uh, resilient of all of the torrent sites. And for those that don't know, uh, Daryl, what is a torrent? A torrent is this thing that you d- use some sort of downloader for. Like you, you need a, sp- a special downloader to download torrents. And you're getting bits and pieces of the file from a bunch of different people. Right. It's a file sharing system that, like many file sharing systems, is sourced from uh, multiple sources instead of one single server sending you the file. The original file sharing things like uh, Napster and LimeWire, they were centralized. Um, Well, the server that had the information about where you were getting the files from might have been centralized, but... The uh, sources of the files with LimeWire and those others are, were still decentralized. They were still individual right, users. Right, so you would upload a file to LimeWire, right. and then LimeWire would have the file somewhere, and somebody no, would incorrect. download it. No, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. Uh, those former systems, uh, whether it was Kazaa or LimeWire or whatever, are uh, decentralized systems, but they may have had an index that was centralized. So the the listing of the files that were available on the system may have been on some sort of central server, but the actual files themselves were not being held by LimeWire and those companies. Okay, yeah, I I thought that was why LimeWire and Napster were so easy to take down is because the centralization 
Whereas with Pirate Bay, it's more of this distributed sort of thing. So it's well, decentralized the and distributed. Well, but the pirate the Pirate Bay is still a central location for the torrent files. So what happens with the torrent is you download a torrent file which has data about the sort of the it's got a tracker. You it's don't got even need the torrent file. You really just need the mirror number. The magnet link is, yeah. uh, as they call so it. Yeah, so there, there's this long string of characters. You need right. that. You don't have to have the file. You put that yeah, into that. your downloader but and say, the... get this file, and then your downloader knows how to get all of the files right. to make that file. But still, the, uh, the, the Pirate Bay is a listing of the different torrents that are out there. Right, and they're not the only one. They're just Correct. the more well-known and the Pirate Bay does have some level of decentralization because there are a bunch of mirror sites. So there's the, right. there's the main Pirate Bay site, and then there are a lot of other sites that they copy all the data from the Pirate Bay. So in the event that the Pirate Bay is taken down, as it has been a number of times in the decade plus that they've been around, that there are still these other sites that are sort of the Pirate Bay copies that exist. Right, but it's not really the Pirate Bay being taken down. It's a website. That's right. That like the DNS is being deactivated on, right. but the information on the site is still on the internet. Correct, because it it has been decentralized anyway. They've done an amazing job at continuing to operate despite multiple governments around the world essentially targeting these guys uh, to try to take them out to try to stop the Pirate Bay, and they've been unsuccessful. And now uh, they're. They've been. Uh, they've apparently they are no longer guilty in this case. The criminal court or a Belgian court acquitted them. Uh, apparently, they were convicted though at some point. Following the convictions of the Pirate Bay Four, co-founders Gottfried Svartholm and Friedrich Niel, former or Nige, former site spokesman Peter Sund, and the financier Carl Lundstrom, most legal matters involving the site have been connected to local ISP blocking injunctions. Never, nevertheless, a separate legal process against the men themselves has persisted in Belgium. Unusually, the case was based in criminal law, with all four of them standing accused of a range of crimes, including criminal copyright infringement and abuse of electronic communications. However, the case itself has always experienced problems all four defendants deny having had anything to do with the site since its reported sale to a company called Reservella in 2006. That has proven problematic since the period in which the four allegedly committed the crimes detailed in the Belgian case spans September 2011 through November 2013. Having failed to connect the quartet with the site's operations during that period, the case has now fallen apart. Yesterday, a judge at the... Michelle's court ruled that it could not be proven that the four were involved in the site during the period in question. Indeed, for at least a year of that period, Svartholm was in jail in Sweden while connecting Lundström to a site uh, a decade after his last involvement, which was purely fan financial, has always been somewhat ridiculous. In the end, even the site's anti-piracy adversaries in the case agreed with the decision. Uh, the director of the Belgian Entertainment Association said, technically speaking, we agree with the court. So uh, they're off the hook. Now, this, th this is one thing that is interesting to sort of compare and contrast the American justice system with the European justice system. Not that I'm necessarily saying that the justice system in Europe is better, but here in America, it seems that there's this ideology of, we don't care if we have the right man, we just want to find somebody mm. guilty. Yeah, that's true. Where there, they're like, uh, yeah, we don't have enough evidence, so we've got to drop the charges. Well, I, I, this is certainly not probably the last time these guys are going to get in hot water about the Pirate Bay. But if it's true that they haven't been involved in the site since 2006, maybe the, the coast is clear for them. I don't know. And I, I don't know anything about the company that actually owns the Pirate Bay. That That's interesting. I wonder if it's like a front corporation or something, and these dudes are still involved behind the scenes, but because it's an LLC or something like that, that there's no way to prove it. No clue. Yeah. Sounds like a conspiracy theory, Ian. It's just speculation. I'm not uh, saying it's a conspiracy, because for it to be a conspiracy, they would have to be plotting to do something negative. And I think that the Pirate Bay is a good thing for the world, to put information out there and have it be uncensored. Okay, so it sounds like a prospiracy theory. I'll give you that. Yeah, although does anybody... Is that actually a word? 
Conspiracy. Yes. It is actually a word. Okay. It's a secret meeting to do something positive. Something positive, right? I mean, that's what it, you would figure that it is. I just, I've never heard it in any context except for when someone's talking about the opposite of a conspiracy. Right. That's basically how the word came about. Mm-hmm. But it is an actual word. All right. So, uh, but it's yeah. even more of a word than twerk. <laughs> I bet twerk's way more popular than Probably. prospiracy. But twerk is such a made up word. At least prospiracy, like it's a real word. Well, every word's been made up at some point, right? Somebody made up the word tree. <laughs> you know? Okay, I I'll give you that. Right, but like, I'm saying that, you know, like there's the parts of the word pro. It's been around for yeah. thousands of years. Spiracy has been around you. for a really long time. Yep. Twerk is just some letters somebody threw together and, like, said, okay, this is what a twerk is. All right, so uh, you may join us here, whether you want to talk about the Pirate Bay. Maybe you think they need to be stopped, these darn pirates, with their music sharing and their movies sharing and their software sharing. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Is sharing going to kill the software business? Or the movie or music business. 855-450-FREE. You can join us here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. For P150, P150GA, P150OK, P150TN, C250A, C250E, C250Q. Not available in all states. Have you put off seeing the dentist because you can't afford to go? Are big dental bills taking a big toll on your wallet? Would you like to have dental insurance but think it's too expensive? If you answered yes to any of these questions, call Physicians Mutual Insurance Company for a free information kit. See how you can help protect your teeth and your wallet by calling now, 1-800-496-5920. This is real dental insurance that can help cover over 300 procedures, everything from cleanings and fillings to crowns and dentures. Your acceptance is guaranteed for one of these insurance policies, even if you're retired. You can see any dentist you choose, and you'll never pay a deductible. Call in the next 10 minutes, and we'll rush you a free information kit with all the details. 1-800-496-5920. 5920. That's 1 800 496 5920. 1 800 496 5920. Extend your life with Extend Hey, neighbor, what are you doing digging? You had a heart attack last year. Oh, I know. I was told no more hard labor. Then why are you digging? Well, I've been taking Extendivite. It's been approved to help my heart. Extendivite? Is that a new drug? No, not a drug. It's uh, more like an herbal combination made from garlic and cayenne. Herbal? How can that help? Well, actually, we've taken herbs for thousands of years, and Extendivite is doing the job for me. Does your doctor know about Extendivite? Yeah, my doctor knows, and he said it seems to be working for you, so don't stop taking it. I feel great taking Extendivite. I don't want to stop. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendovite. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. We're back with more Free Talk Live. You're welcome to join us here. And uh, we're talking about file sharing to start out the show tonight. But, of course, you can bring up anything you'd like to discuss. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And if you are getting online somewhere, anywhere in the world, ProXPN can be useful to you because they will encrypt your Internet connection for you, which means your own Internet service provider. They won't know what you're doing online anymore once you start using ProXPN. Right now, they are likely logging every website you visit, the search terms you're entering in, maybe selling that information to other corporations to data mine your information, uh, perhaps also giving it away to governments, and maybe even somebody's trying to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets. Whatever the danger is, you can help protect yourself online by encrypting your internet connection with ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Download the software there. It's Windows, Mac, iOS devices, Android as well. Linux, you go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and you can get started for free right now. But when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you can save 50% off their already affordable monthly price when you buy an annual account with code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50. With that premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 to get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. It's Ian and Daryl in the studio with you here tonight. The Pirate Bay co-founders are acquitted in a Belgian court, apparently. And so I imagine the record industry is very upset about this. They, of course, want to crack down as much as they possibly can on operations like the Pirate Bay. But I'm wondering if there are people out there who think that the Pirate Bay operators do need to be punished. The people who support uh, the recording industry and who think that piracy is its call, which is a nasty way of saying sharing sharing right. music and movies and files online, that you think this is somehow a bad thing, that it's going to hurt uh, businesses, because that's typically the argument. You're welcome to join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE or Skype in at username lrn.fm. Let's go to Jason in Wichita. You can also bring up anything you want. Jason, go ahead. You're on Free Talk Live. Yes, hello. Good evening. Um, as far as file sharing goes, or any kind of internet-based data sharing, I myself am an independent game developer. And I have went independent because I'm tired of the way the mainstream media, or especially the game development industry, is taking their products. But as intellectual property goes, I do believe in the protection of intellectual property, but I also believe in sharing it because I myself torrent music and videos. But if I really like them, obviously, nine times out of ten, everybody who uh, file shares anyway has gone out and watched that movie. Yeah. Or they're tired of buying into movies. And, you know, if they're tired into buying into the movies, that might suck. They, you know, it gets them to put their feet in the water to see if they like it. If they want a better quality video, they'll go out there and buy it. So I actually believe that torrenting is more of a good thing because it could entice people to actually go out there. I think there's evidence that for that. Sense? I think there's absolutely evidence for that, that, uh, that people who file share are kind of coming from a couple different categories, maybe a few different categories. There's the kind of person who they're not going to buy it anyway, period, end of story. Right. There's also the kind of person who, like you're saying, they realize that, oh, well, you know, if this company that's made this product that I enjoy, I liked that movie, I liked this music, this video game, whatever, if, they, uh, if I want them to continue making products that I enjoy, then I should purchase the product because that's the right thing to do to encourage them to continue offering new things uh, and innovations to the marketplace. And so uh, there's, there has been studies done where they've actually talked to people who use file sharing services and a, a significant amount of them. I don't remember the statistics or anything. A lot of them 
said they absolutely use it to sort of taste before they buy, so to speak, that they right. will buy. And things like YouTube have allowed people to actually become like rock stars. Justin Bieber, as annoying as this little guy is, he started out making YouTube videos of himself not wearing a T-shirt, playing a guitar, and singing some songs. And then he got a lot of hits, and now he's you know like one of the highest paid recording artists. So same thing had, with Bo Burnham. Yeah. So like, had YouTube and these other things not existed, to where people could go out and find sort of alternatives to what the mainstream media was pushing, then some mm. of these people would not be stars right now. So you know, like file sharing and these free sites that allow people to consume content, have actually wound up helping. People And I pulled up an article on that that hopefully we'll be able to get to later on how torrenting actually causes artists to make a profit. Nice. Jason, anything else you it want to brings share? More public, yeah, it brings more public awareness. Uh, again, um, there are two major games that I'm developing and then a hardware element because as a gamer, we're tired of being force-fed controllers or human interface devices that uh, you know are not being bettered by that industry. So, you know, we're trying to push out that effort. Now, obviously, you can't copy or torrent hardware, <laughs> but uh, what we can do when it comes to software is still use that freedom to entice people more to us or to anybody else. And that's what I would inspire people to do is to you know, see the broader picture when it comes to torrenting or free sharing that information. You, there are still ways that you can get them to buy into uh, what you're working for. For example, I don't care. Me and my team don't really care for profit. Uh, we know that the profit you know, is going to be there uh, because we know where the market is. But the only, you know, what we really care for is that our, that people like what we're doing, and we are doing this because no one else is doing. It. I know I'm kind of being vague there, but we're developing what I would call the game of all games, and that says a lot. But then again, it might say nothing, and some people might say BS. But um, the thing is, again, it requires freedom in order to exercise our full potential. And that goes back to file sharing and especially music, the expression of what our intentions are, yeah. what we see, what we like. And I hate to say this, but if, you know, um, Google or anyone else really knew it was better for them, they would, you know, track these even better than what they're currently doing. You know, seeing more about these torrents, you know, they're kind of, I would hope that they're, kind of ish they would develop a system that would enable it more because it would bring more people to more artists yeah instead and, google's doing uh, the opposite apparently yeah. there was news that chrome browser is now uh coming up with errors when you put in like torrents.eu t-o-r-r-e-n-t-z.eu the chrome browser will yell at you and say there's malware possible malware on this site you know to scare people away true. This just started this, true. I this week. That right now. <laughs> yep. It just literally yeah. just started yeah. like within 48 hours uh, ago. It's working on mine. Really? Okay. Yes. Hmm. Maybe you don't have the latest Chrome browser or something like that. Perhaps you haven't upgraded? I don't think I have. Plus, I'm using Chromium, not Chrome. That would be why. Yeah. Google Chrome specifically is now blocking multiple torrent websites. You know, they'll let you through as long as you click the little, I know the risks. I'm okay with right, malware. Right. Uh, and so no one's going to do that. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. You want to know what the biggest thing is about yeah. torrents, though? Please. Sorry sorry to interrupt, but no, the biggest ahead. thing about torrents is, um, or about watching movies in general, for you, uh, I just recently found this out a few months ago. People don't realize that if they go out and bet, if they can prove that they've bought a ticket, say, Avengers Age of Ultron, you actually now own the right to get a copy you actually purchased into um, that that's not true that's that sounds like misinformation but thank you jason you don't actually even own the movies that you buy at the store you're under a, technically under a licensing agreement to not show those With things the fbi measles is activating on a mass scale now due to the vaccines and iron poisoning all symptoms disease and deaths are due to measles and iron not just rash and flu-like symptoms, as the officials claim. Measles requires a host with iron to replicate. Iron intake is at an unprecedented level. Deaths and hospitalizations are set to soar now in 2015. This is the extermination plan, people. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G-them.com. Unveilingthem.com. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or... Go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Thomas the Tank Engine says he's a little uneasy with his broad autistic following, and a couple has a nest egg of debt to make sure they've got some money to owe down the road. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local video editor James Korf told reporters Wednesday that despite having said goodbye over 10 minutes ago, his friend, Michael Woodward, still remained active on Gchat and had shown no signs of leaving. If it were yellow, it would mean that he hasn't been on the computer for a little while, or if it was red, it would mean he doesn't want to talk, but it's green, I can tell, I can see it right there. Korf later said that he felt briefly relieved when Woodward's chat logo turned orange, but was once again dejected when it became green within seconds. And in this week's op-ed pages, a high school guidance counselor laments the fact that no one in his entire damn school has been molested. In other news, a bed bug feels bad for an area man, but a bug's gotta eat. A development exec wants to see what, where, and how that would look, live, and play out. And a man at the gym is just watching TV. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're here on the live Saturday edition. You can call and talk about anything on your mind. Still to come, we can discuss the Satanic Temple. They have themselves a statue, the one they've been building for quite a while now. It seems like close to a year uh, that was in originally intended to go onto the Oklahoma State Capitol grounds. We'll tell you more about that uh, when we get a chance. It's Ian with you here. And Daryl. Uh, also, the Pirate Bay founders acquitted, according to truthvoice.com and uh, torrentfreak.com, led to a larger discussion about file sharing in general and does it actually harm or does it help uh, the people in the media creation business, people making the movies and the music. If you listen to the industry associations, you'll see them claiming, we're losing billions of dollars every year because of file sharing. It must be stopped. 
uh, there is other evidence that suggests that they're actually selling other copies. You know, they're selling more copies because of file sharing, because people otherwise wouldn't buy until they can try it first. And then when they try it and they like it, they go out and they get a copy of the DVD or the uh, Blu-ray or the whatever. Right. And piracy is, you know, and again, you know, like you said, that's a horrible word, but I don't really know of another file simple sharing? way of saying it. Other, Yeah, and that's more syllables. I, I'm saying, like, there's mm. not another... Sharing, sharing sure. is fewer syllables than piracy. Sure. Okay. So, sharing of music, and again, that's still a longer phrase, mm-hmm. but whatever. Uh, that's not the sole reason that sales have declined. Sales started declining well before there was internet. Because really? you had... Right, because you had uh, first like records, and then switched over to like eight tracks, and then to cassettes, and mm-hmm. then to CDs, and yeah, there there were little bursts here and there to where sales went up, to where people would go buy a bunch of CDs instead of having all of these tapes. But for the most part, you know, the sales have been declining somewhat steadily, and since before the internet. Yes. Interesting. I yeah, don't... and back like when records first started coming out, mm-hmm. there were a lot of musicians that said, I will never sell records because then people won't come to my concerts. Wow. So like there there's always something that is the reason that the music industry is going to die. <laughs> and piracy is the latest thing that is going to cause right. it to die, even though Sure, the, VHS was gonna kill the movie business. Right. And yeah. uh, cassettes were gonna kill the movie industry. Yeah, people too, being able to record stuff on VHS right. and cassette tapes at home was going to just like kill everything. Let's go to Todd. He's in Tallahassee uh, listening to WVFT-FM. Hey, Todd. Hey, how are you guys? Welcome, Long-time sir. listener. Love the show. Thanks. Go ahead. Hey, uh, one thing, I think the music industry was kind of the first one that was threatened by this whole thing uh, with Napster and some of the other ones. And, and you know, they were mm-hmm. the first ones to innovate also. Uh, you know, the, and they kind of realized that a lot of their profit was not going to come from CD sales anymore. Um, and now the price of concerts have, are, you know, have skyrocketed. I mean, have they? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, man. Hmm. Have, when's the last time you've been to a live show? It's been a long time. <laughs> I mean, I can't say I've seen yeah. any sort of big name band in a, quite a long time. I mean, I'll say the same thing, but I've I've looked online because I've been interested in going, and I'm mm-hmm. from the, you know, I'm 45. I'm from the Stone Ages. I paid 17 bucks to see Van Halen. You know. Um, now, if I mean any well, of the money isn't bands, worth what it or, was back in the 1980s, right? You know, so right, you but even more. like but when adjusting you for inflation, inflation it's a lot higher. Huh. So it's it'd be like 180. I mean, yeah, I absolutely realize the cost of bread is higher too, but yeah. it's not you know 10 times higher, 50 times higher. I mean, it's, I wouldn't uh, call that I innovation. I mean, <laughs> going and well, uh, no, going and doing something they've always the done and then charging more for it really isn't innovative. Well, it's just but a now they've got lasers. The, I'm the sorry. The margins the same. You're you know? saying the what now? The margins are the same. Well, it's a way for them to keep the margins close or keep them the same. If mm-hmm. their album sales go down, they charge more for concert. That does help, and I think that I mean it's going to have to create innovation if they're going to stay alive. Um, I think that some, I think you're right in a, in, in a sense that some people do go out and buy. Um, I know myself. I, I mean, why would I go out and buy a movie when I got a great HD quality copy for free online? Why would I go out then and buy it? Except for what you said to support them, whatever. I mean, they're not supporting me. Screw those guys. <laughs> but maybe <laughs> the movie that you're buying on DVD has bonus features that what you downloaded right. from Man, you know, the Pirate Bay look, doesn't I have. I, I, I smoke a lot of pot, but there ain't enough pot to make me sit and watch those stupid fucking bonus. Oh, you stuff. can't say that on the radio. You are on the radio, and we're sorry about that, but you can't say the F word. Our toll-free number is uh, is 855-450-FREE. He was saying that, uh, before we, we had to uh, hit the dump button there, he was saying that no amount of marijuana could make him want to sit through bonus features on DVDs and Blu-rays. And I think that, you know, that kind of is an interesting question. How many people actually watch the bonus features? I'm the kind of person who will watch uh, bonus features on Depending some Depending on the movies. movie, there right. there's movies where I've watched the bonus features. Right. Like, if I, I really I watched liked the it. commentary tracks 
on the second and third Matrix that yeah. nobody nobody liked the movie. Mm. I liked the bonus track where it was the producers. So wait, you didn't like the movie? No, but you... I loved the movies. Okay. And the bonus tracks. But right. everybody that I've talked to, they're like, oh, the second movie was all right. I the liked third them. one was a piece of crap. I thought they were fine. So there you go. Now you got one more. All right. Good. Although, to be fair, I have not taken the time to watch the third one again. Right? Like, I watched it the first time and was I enjoyed it. And I actually own it. But I don't think I've... I actually own it on Blu-ray, but I don't think I've ever actually watched it. <laughs> Which, there you go. Right? There's evidence that I put some money in to support right. the movies that... Uh, that I like. And then, of course, you know, every new format comes out. They're releasing these things over and over again. Um, although eventually, you know, we're probably not going to have any kind of format. But is Blu-ray going to be the last physical media that we come across? Because is everything after Blu-ray going to be digitally delivered? Meaning, uh, yeah, Blu-ray's digital. I know what you mean there. But what I'm talking about is over the internet. Right. Like some you, sort of you've screen. got an actual physical thing yeah. that you put somewhere. Right. Uh, I think Blu-ray might be the last one. Yeah, maybe. Although it, it would not surprise me if at some point some company somewhere comes up with like a really large sort of USB drive mm-hmm. that has like, here's every episode of Star Trek ever <laughs> on a flash drive. And so, you know, like the Star Trek nerds, they could get the original series, yep. the next generation, all wow. 7,000 of the movies. What will that flash drive the cost? The deep space whatever. <laughs> and, you know, $1,000. Like, be a flash drive with everything. Yeah. And, you know, like including never, beso- never before they seen interviews with because William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. You know, what would they charge for? Because at that point, the physical media costs next to zero as... Uh, as storage gets cheaper and cheaper over time, it approaches right. zero in its cost per megabyte or gigabyte or terabyte or whatever we end up uh, getting towards. And so storage just keeps getting cheaper. So that flash drive costs next to nothing to manufacture. But what will the actual you know, charge be for something like that? Would it be $5,000? Would it be a $500? I'd I mean, probably say a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Just because think of the labor that you would expand or expend going on to you know the pirate bay and right. trying to find everything from Star Trek. You couldn't. Right. Not even the pirate bay is that comprehensive. There's no way. I bet you if you went on to the pirate bay's website and looked for every episode of Star Trek, they would not be there. Be just because there's so many of them. It would be hard for the 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 pirate world, the rippers and crackers or whoever to expend that level of effort to even encode all that data. Right. So that's why I'm thinking, you yeah. know, like there, there's going to be something that, you know, like limited issue Maybe. flash drive. But flash drives aren't as pretty. They don't have the shiny bottom, you know, with the rainbows and the reflecting things. They can make a flash drive with a shiny bottom <laughs> in. I, I know you like things with shiny bottoms. I like the shiny Blu-rays and DVDs and things. I, I just think, you know, is that going to be the end of it? Because DVD lasted for a while, you know, made it from the mid-90s through today. It's still going pretty strong. And uh, Blu-ray... Blu-ray didn't come out in the mid-90s. No, DVD, I said. DVD in the mid-90s. Oh, okay. And, Blu- and Blu-ray is mid-aughts is when that came out. 855 450 free. There's more on the way. You can talk about file sharing or whatever's on your mind on Free Talk Live. You, me, and BTC is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. We're sitting down with Mr. Jason King. If you want to f*** with the government, (laughs) feed homeless people, man. Jeffrey Tucker, what's possible in the Bitcoin space? It sounds a little like science fiction, but if you wait enough time, it becomes a reality. Angela Keaton from Antiwar.com. This is what the United States does with all the killer robots. For Bitcoiners, this is a way to get around that. Subscribe at you, me, and BTC.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, 
There's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and we've been talking about file sharing here tonight with the news that the Pirate Bay founders have been acquitted in a Belgian court. According to truthvoice.com, we'll put that story out on our Facebook page and Twitter here in a little bit, which, of course, you can access both of those by going to news.freetalklive.com. That'll give you links to our Facebook and Twitter and such, and also our email list, which you can sign up for to receive updates from Free Talk Live. You'll be the first to know when we get new radio stations on board, and you'll get our weekly digest, which gives you a rundown of some of the most popular stories as submitted and voted on by you on our website. So go to news.freetalklive.com. You can get signed up there for the email list. And again, follow us on Facebook and or Twitter, whatever your preference. So again, that's news.freetalklive.com. Ian here with you tonight. And Daryl. Daryl, you wanted to tell us about, since we're on this file sharing topic, you had a story about uh, torrenting and how some people are saying it can help companies' profits. Uh, right? Not necessarily the company, but the artist. Oh, the artist. Okay. So the meaning cutting out the middleman, getting rid of the uh, the record companies. Uh, not necessarily even that. Hmm. All right, tell me more. Uh, so, a- admittedly, this article is a little dated. It's from 2006, but it was one of the first articles to come up in a search result mm-hmm. of file sharing and profits, and it's published by Torrent Freak. And they say that piracy is not all bad for musicians. In fact, research has shown that less popular artists actually profit from piracy. This can be concluded from and is supported by several studies. Frustrated as they are, the music industry claims they lose millions a year due to piracy. But is that really the case? They're claiming billions now. 
And this was a dec- decade ago. They're saying it's billions now. Two facts. Yep. Album sales are declining. 75% of all artists profit from file sharing. We will try to explain these two seemingly contradicting facts and list three factors that may help us understand what's going on. Artists sell more albums thanks to piracy. Several studies have shown that most artists actually profit from unauthorized sharing of files. They sell more albums because people have the opportunity to download songs and entire albums for free. Mm -hmm. So what was already said, you know, test it before you buy it. So 75% of artists actually profit, while the most popular artists, accounting for the top 25%, wind up selling fewer records. So some people do wind up losing Mm, money. Interesting. And because it's the, you know... Top earners, basically, that accounts for most of what is being lost by the uh, album companies. Okay. Uh, the article here continues. It says, however, the remaining 75% of all artists actually profit. The same pattern was found by Peterson, who analyzed the change in royalties paid by the Nordisk Copyright Bureau between 2001 and 2005. And then there's a chart in here showing that the earners under 10,000, uh, that being under 10,000 Danish kronar, mm-hmm. uh, that skyrocketed, like went up drastically. So this is so what you're saying is p- the uh, file sharing networks are helping less popular artists and might hurt Getting a little exposure and might hurt the uh, the bigger ones. Right. So like. Taylor Swift yeah. is making you know a little bit less because people are you know file sharing her stuff, but she's still making millions of dollars because people listen to her stuff on Pandora. They watch mm-hmm. the videos on YouTube. She gets these royalties from everywhere else. So you know, like she's not hurting for money at all. She's no. probably making a little less than what she would like or what she otherwise would be making. But, you know, it's the lower level people that you and I probably have never heard of that are getting a few extra album sales because people, you know, were able to test it before they buy it. Right. The ones who have no record company, they don't have some label backing them and promoting them. Well, some of these might have a label that they're signed with, Mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily getting the push that some of the bigger artists do. Uh, The story here continues, or rather the article continues. It says, but why do these artists sell more? Well, there are a couple of possible explanations. Music from highly popular artists is widely available on file sharing networks. If pirates mainly download albums from these artists, they will have more money left to buy albums of less popular artists. Hmm. People have the opportunity to discover new music for free. It is thus easier to find new and less popular artists. It is likely that people will buy albums from these artists as well if they like what they hear. And it's not only piracy that makes it easier to discover new artists. Social music services like Last FM and Pandora also contribute to this phenomenon. The rise in income from concert shows that the interest in music is increasing instead of declining. Well, certainly, uh, people are always going to want music. That's something right. that's always going to be the case about human beings, uh, because uh, there's obvious reasons for that, right? People just love music. It brings people together, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's not going to go away. How it's delivered to them, that's definitely changing. And the thing that the record companies, the thing about them is they hate the change. They hate the fact that people are are doing their own thing. They're going out there and getting music in the way they think is best. The customer is deciding how their music is being delivered. And now. I'm glad you mentioned formats because that's what they get into next. Okay. LP, CD, DVD, MP3. Yep. Uh, the increased album sales of the late 90s may well have been caused at least in part by the shift from cassettes and LPs to CDs. Meaning that people were rebuying things on CD? So they wanted to convert all of their stuff over. Mm -hmm. And there's a chart that shows from 1980 to about 1995, there was a slight uptick, but for the most part it was fairly flat. And the last couple of years heading into 95, there was a slight decline Mm. In album sales. And then CDs come out. People go out, buy all new stuff in CDs. CDs came out in the 80s. They did, but they were very expensive. So, like, you Mm -hmm. know, 
the affordability of CD players was really in the early to mid 90s. I would say early 90s. Okay, yeah. I'll give you so, that. you know, like by the mid 90s, which is what the chart shows and what they talk about, there's like a big uptick mm-hmm. in album sales from 95 to 2000. And then after 2000, it returned to normal, mm. which, you know, some people are saying, oh, it's because of sharing that this has gone down. No, it's because. People didn't need to, you know, like buy a new Led Zeppelin CD because they bought that eight years ago. Mm. Uh, but they write, uh, where, where was I here? After 2000, CDs were not just that special anymore, and the number of albums sold normalized. It's also likely that the, the decline in CD sales was influenced by the increasing popularity of DVDs and MP3s. Mm. The argument is also mentioned in a research paper. Uh, from 2004 that says the results indicate that transitions from LPs to CDs might describe the increase in music sales during the late 1990s. There's also a report in 2006 that says the same thing. But it's been going down ever since 2000 is what you're saying. Uh, Yes. Yeah. The internet is changing the way people experience music. Like we mentioned earlier, the internet opened up a ton of possibilities for people to discover new artists and music, not only illegal downloads, but also legal downloads or paid downloads. iTunes, Google Play, these different formats or these setups. Amazon, I think, is doing it. You know, different ways to deliver MP3 downloads to people, and they're paying for them. Yes. Uh, So, Which wouldn't factor into so-called album sales, would it? Because you can buy individual tracks. Right. So buying a single is not buying an album. Right. They're still making profit, but it's not, you know, counting in that album sales. Uh, they put today, let people are less dependent on what the music industry is campaigning for. Yeah, I think it's good, too, because, you know, not just uh, file sharing, but also the fact that these trackable purchases, these individual track purchases exist, can help increase the overall quality of an album, because if the people producing the album know they can't get away with what they got away with in the 1990s which is put a couple good songs on release those good songs to radio and then the rest of the album's crap and then you know you just spent 19 bucks on a cd back in the 1990s and you get the same two great songs you've heard on the radio a bunch of times and a bunch of junk that might turn you off to buying more cds in the future whereas if now the artists know well everyone's going to hear every single track because they can download it in advance before they actually even buy the thing maybe that'll increase the quality now of course you can argue that the quality of music has gone down anyway and that the right. the lyrical content has gone down in grade level we actually read a story about that here on free talk live uh, i don't know a few weeks back where maybe a few months ago where they somebody did an analysis of the reading level <laughs> that you would have to have in order to comprehend the lyrics of pop music and it has gone down in the last decade or so from like third grade to first and second grade wow so it's like it's dumbed down even more the most sort of pop music kind of and the conclusion here is that file sharing illegal file sharing accounts for no more than 30 percent of the decline in sales Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We'll come back with more here. The Satanic Temple coming up. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shaquettes. Reminding you that anytime. Anytime. Is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of gold bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded elevator ride. Or golf. Or working with hard day's work like sports casting you said it ladies stay cool with gold bond powder spray stay cool with gold bond 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, July 11th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.61 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,163 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $293. Antiwar.com reports fighting picked up early Friday in Yemen with the hours leading up to the ceasefire, which began at 23.59 local time, seeing several clashes inside several major cities, including Taiz. Then the ceasefire began, and almost immediately thereafter, Saudi warplanes were attacking Taiz. Reports are that Saudi airstrikes against Taiz began less than an hour after the ceasefire began, with three different strikes reported hitting Houthi targets, including a camp and a military convoy. Pro-Saudi fighters had claimed the Houthis were violating the ceasefire by continuing to advance into the city once it began, and suggesting that was the pretext for the Saudi strike. Saudi officials were spurning the truce before it even began, insisting they did not trust the Houthis to honor it. The Houthis, for their part, insisted that they were holding their ground in Taiz against an offensive by pro-Saudi forces, and the airstrikes compounded on that truce violation. The UN is urging both sides to honor the ceasefire, and despite these incidents, strikes appear to have halted across most of the country. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports Office of Personnel Management Director Catherine Archuleta resigned on Friday amid growing criticism over her handling of a massive data breach that resulted in the theft of personal information from millions of people. Archuleta, the director since November 2013, personally submitted her letter of resignation Friday morning to President Obama, saying new leadership was needed at the Federal Personnel Agency to move beyond the current challenges. The president accepted her resignation. Archuleta said in a statement, Today, I inform the OPM workforce that I am stepping down as the leader of this remarkable agency and the remarkable people who work for it. This morning, I offered and the president accepted my resignation as the director of the Office of Personnel Management. I conveyed to the president that I believe it is best for me to step aside and allow new leadership to step in, enabling the agency to move beyond the current challenges and allowing the people at OPM to continue their important work. Beth Cobert, the Deputy Director of Management at the Office of Management and Budget, will fill in temporarily until a replacement is found. On Thursday, the Office of Personnel Management announced the data breach in late 2014 was more extensive than first thought, saying information from 21.5 million people were compromised in addition to the personal data of 4.2 million current and former federal employees. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
Reuters reports a divided Ohio appeals court panel on Friday said it would not force a municipal judge to issue arrest warrants for Cleveland police officers involved in the fatal shooting of 12-year-old Tamir Rice in a city park last November. A group of community activists who have sought to bring charges against the officers directly through a little-known Ohio law had asked the 8th District Court of Appeals to compel the judge to issue arrest warrants in the case. Cleveland Municipal Court Judge Ronald A. Dreen in June found probable cause for Officer Timothy Lohman, who shot Rice and his partner, Frank Garnbach, to face charges in the shooting. Appellate Court Judge Frank Calabrese Jr. wrote in the two-to-one ruling denying their request that the community leaders could ask a higher court to review Adreen's decision. Judge Anita Mays said Adreen should have been compelled to issue the warrants. Lohman shot Rice twice within seconds of arriving outside a city recreation center on November 22nd in response to an emergency call of a man with a gun. Rice was playing with an airsoft-type replica handgun that shoots pellets and died the day after being shot. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A heroic broken sewage pipe floods Congress with waste. Johnson & Johnson introduces new leave-in Q-tips. This Thursday, local youth Andrew Robillard told reporters he had no idea why he couldn't wear his Iron Man costume to his grandfather's funeral. Robillard, whose grandfather passed away this week after complications from a stroke, vented his frustration to reporters and noted that his grandpa, quote, probably wouldn't even care if he dressed like Iron Man at the funeral. Iron Man is awesome. I want to wear my Iron Man suit. I am a Man. And in tech news, a news website refers to its users' ceaseless exchange of racial slurs as a discussion. In other news, Guinness World Records promotes the man who can lift 27 pounds with his tongue to editor-in-chief. Thursday's cry is moved up to Wednesday due to a scheduling conflict, and a family watches in silence as dad checks out the waitress. This is the Onion News Network. back with more Free Talk Live. You can join us here on the live Saturday edition. The toll-free number for you to use is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian and Daryl. Let's go right to your phone calls and thoughts. For those of you just tuning in, uh, we have been talking about file sharing. Still to come, the Satanic Temple, the latest on their devil statue. It's actually a, a Baphomet uh, statue. According to RT.com, we'll tell you more about that. First, Stephen is in Austin, Texas, and you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Stephen. Hey, guys. Always an interesting show. Thanks. I <clears throat> wanted just to add a couple very quick points. Uh, you, you guys were spot on in the last segment <clears throat> talking about how, I, I guess we call it piracy, or I would just call it swapping or file sharing, uh, mm -hmm. does not negatively impact up-and-coming artists. A good friend of mine is in a band. I may plug it. It's called The Wild Feathers, and they're a uh, actually a, they've got a recording contract with Warner Brothers, and they're into their second album now. And <clears throat> it's it's insane. I mean, it, we we all complain and talk about, it, especially on your show, with the big banking system and that kind of stuff. But goodness gracious, the recording industry is the the big banking system on steroids hmm. and the control that they have over over up and coming bands, even if they're very successful, sell out shows, top forty hits, you name it. And so I would completely agree with what you guys were saying and that what what ends up what ends up happening is these guys, these bands, they make peanuts while the likes of Warner Brothers or, you know, uh, uh, the, the other recording studios, I think there's only about four of them now that are the big recording studios across the, yeah. the world, make all the money. And what they do is it, it's almost like a controlled farm system where you have just a very select few that even if they're getting sellout shows, even if they're selling significant amounts of CDs and albums, which, by the way, it's, I think it's pretty cool as a 40-something-year-old that vinyl's making a big comeback. It's kind of cool, that old scratchy sound on the turntable. But side note, but that, but that all said, these guys do very, very well, and, and then there, there's a controlled release of who makes it quote-unquote big. And here's why. I think once folks make it quote big, then the big boys of the recording studios, they lose control. And so as long as they kind of keep them bottled up just enough to where the record mm. sales or the album sales are good, the, the concert shows are healthy, you know, the, the MP3 downloads are healthy, et cetera, 
then all is well. The minute they become, you guys, you guys mentioned Taylor Swift earlier. You know, the minute the minute they become Taylor Swift level, I think the the, the genie's out of the bottle. And then those folks, those artists, which you know, commend them for their skills. Uh, once they get to that level, then they make the lion's share of the money because they know that they're they're driving the bus. Until they get sure. to that point, the, the the big recording studios and the record companies they control the wagon. It's just it's it's really sad to see because there's so much. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys love music just as much as I do. There's so much you know awesome artists uh, uh, out there and, and art that is done in, in music, and it's just it's a controlled industry that's just it's really sad. And I for one. Love the fact that you can get online. You can you can uh, you can shop around for free. You can experiment with music. You see what you like, and then from there, you bet. Just let's go check them out the next time they're in town. Let's go buy their album. You know all that kind of good stuff. So that's my thoughts. Awesome, good thoughts, Stephen. Thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Our toll free number here is eight fifty five four fifty free, and you'll hear the same story from from the artists themselves that they've been screwed over, you know, in a variety of different ways by these record companies. And they don't bring the same value to the table that they used to. I'm not saying they don't bring any value to the table. They still have promotional ability that you don't have on your own. They have the connections with the radio stations. If you want to get radio airplay, you know, you basically got to be with one of these major labels. Right. So they're like a lot of old media, and I think they count as old media. Normally when, when, I, when I say old media, I'm usually only talking about radio, television, you know, that kind of print uh, but technically, the record companies are old media. They manufacture media. And yes, they put and it out they've there. been around for a long time. Right. Um, so like a lot of old media, they're sort of they're resting on their laurels as much as they can. They have things the way they used to be, and they want them the, the way they used to be as long as possible. But the market wants something else, and so they're sort of reluctant to change, and they want to use every possible legal channel they can to crush any new upstarts that actually do bring innovation into uh, to the business. And, and one of the sort of upstarts that in some ways is trying to become like the old media is YouTube, to where they have these different tiers of royalties to where they pay, you know, the people that are earning a lot of money on YouTube videos, they get a higher royalty really? than the quote-unquote regular people. So, so from when you monetize you, a video, if you get more views, they actually pay you higher? Right. So I, I forget what the threshold is, but it jumps from, I, I think it's $0.05 cents per thousand to $0.07 cents per thousand. Wow, okay. That's at a, a certain increase. level, which, you know, it doesn't sound like that much, but when you're thinking 5 to 7 you know, that's almost, uh, it's almost 50%. almost 50%. Yeah. And you're adding that to, you know, like, oh, this video got 100 million views. So right. then multiply times seven cents. And it makes a big difference. Whereas somebody that gets 10,000 views gets five cents. So, you know, like, yeah, not only are they getting more because they have more views, they're getting more, you know, cents on each of those views. Let's talk to Paul. He's in Santa Rosa, Florida, listening to uh, WYOOFM. Hey, Paul. How's it going? Welcome. You're on the air. Segment, guys. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. I was just calling in, you know, we're talking about file sharing, and so one of my wife owns a bar. As a matter of fact, I'm headed there right now, and she has live entertainment um, and sings herself during the week. And uh, she's getting hit up by, you know, the guys like uh, BMI and CSPAC oh, and, yeah. and uh, ASCAP and so on. And, and the, the one that's driving her nuts right now is, is CSPAC because they claim to have, oh, I think three to five percent of the market, as far as the artists that are signed up, but they still want her to pay, and the and the on the pretense that they may sign an artist in the future, therefore she owes them money. What are they so, demanding? Uh, How much money do these guys uh, want? Well, I, they, well, CFAC started out with um, asking for three thousand three hundred dollars a year. Jeez. Um, and this and is what what wanted, group is it? CSAC. C-S-A-C. S-E-S-A-C. S-E-S-A-C. That's Don't a new one. I've never heard of them before. before. Well, yeah, and they're and they're this one of the smaller parts of the market. And huh. you know, I, from what I hear, the, the amount of money that actually makes it back to the artist is very small. Sure, you know? of course. Um, but so they're what, supposed to claim it. They're saying, the, "Hey, the lady, time. you own a bar. There's a chance you might play some music from one of our artists. So we want four thousand right. dollars from you every year." Correct. 
and, it, and they're all the same. And it, yeah, or or you know we'll see you in court if you don't pay it. And you know BMI's the biggest; they've got the biggest library, so they they say say the same thing. It's like, well, you're going to play some of our artists, you know. Whereas we would take the side of it, okay, so give us a list of who's on your, and they won't do that by the way; they will never give you a list. Um, <laughs> Give us a list of who is you know that that you have on your assigned, mm-hmm. and then if we play it, then we'll pay you X amount. But we're not going to pay you just because you're saying you know. Normally, how business works is you get an invoice for something, and it's got detailed invoicing on it. Sure. And it's like okay, so you you paid for that service and you you owe for that service, but to say that uh, you know that you may play a song and you owe us for it is just ridiculous. So. Wow. Now, is it illegal? Now, not that you necessarily know, but uh, is it illegal for the bar to just put on a radio station, given that the radio station has paid various fees to right. these companies? Can they just rebroadcast, or is that also considered a, a performance? I think radio is okay, but um, actually they want it even if it's Pandora uh, or Spotify or any of those. And they Pandora is paying through paid. the nose for, uh, for various licensing fees. Yeah. I've heard that they're paying 50% right. of their revenues out uh in licensing fees so right, it's, it's crazy oh yeah because there's the different level fees if you're radio or if you're online only yeah. that's why pandora right. actually bought a radio station so that they can right. try to say no we're a broadcast station now yeah. well ex- how can they sue i mean i guess you can sue anybody for any reason but how would they have any standing if they don't have any proof that this lady's played their music well, they send out um, sort of spies to go, you know, spend a week at the, you know, the bar or a sure. few days at the bar, and then they kind of take notes, and then they say, "Here's your, here's our evidence." But that, that still wouldn't be enough for a whole year, you know, either. So, Paul, thanks it, for your call tonight, man. I, I appreciate the. Oh, it's absolutely extortion. I thank you for the call tonight. They'll do the same thing to a restaurant that sings "Happy Birthday." They'll hit you for that too. It's free talk live. More coming up here in moments. You can share your thoughts with us. Are you suffering with hearing loss? Are you sick of people constantly complaining that your TV is too loud? Are you tired of asking people to speak up? Would you like to hear more clearly, but you don't want to wear a hearing aid that makes you look old? Then you need to try Listen Clear, a life-changing breakthrough precisely designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. And you can adjust Listen Clear to find the perfect way to hear everything, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And now we're extending our in-home trial to let you try Listen Clear risk-free for a full 45 days. With free shipping, we'll even give you free batteries for life. Call now, 1-800-956-9829. Listen Clear is lightweight and completely hassle-free, and it's practically invisible. Call for your extended 45-day in-home trial with free shipping and free batteries for life. For free information, call now, 1-800-956-9829. That's 1-800-956-9829. 1-800-956-9829. Hi, this is Walt Augustinowitz. I'm the founder and CEO of ID Stronghold. By now you've heard our commercials about wallets that protect you from electronic pickpocketing. Ten years ago, I created a way to protect my own cards from prying eyes after government officials started talking about issuing a national ID card with a built-in radio chip called RFID. I felt having to broadcast my personal information was an invasion of privacy. Soon after, it was also announced that credit cards, debit cards, U.S. passports, hotel room keys, and even transit passes would all soon incorporate RFID. It was then I formed ID Stronghold to share my inventions in blocking RFID signals with the world. There are a lot of misconceptions out there today about RFID. I encourage everyone to get informed and get protected. Please go to idstronghold.com and get the facts and the wallet sleeves or badge holders you need to protect your personal financial data. You'll be pleasantly surprised that through our direct sales model, you won't pay more than other comparable unprotected wallets. It is as though the protection is free. Visit idstronghold.com today. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gap intact. 
Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live, you may join us toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and it's Ian with you. And Daryl. Don't forget about Express Coin. Maybe you've been thinking, now's the time to go and get some Bitcoin. The price has been going up in the last few weeks. You've been thinking about it and thinking about it. How about I can tell you how to get Bitcoin and Litecoin and Dogecoin uh, you can get Bitcoin with no fee for the transfer. You know, normally when you tr- transfer one currency into another, there's a fee involved. But not when you go to ExpressCoin.com and use coupon code FTL and buy up to $40 worth of Bitcoin. Now, if you go more than $40, you will be charged a fee, but it's a very reasonable one. A 3% is, uh, I believe, what they're charging over at Express. I don't know what's going on with my microphone there. You hear me okay there, Daryl? I am not. Okay. Well, it seems to be back now. So anyway, uh, hopefully that won't happen again. I love technical difficulties. Uh, ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL and save on up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency. Beyond that, you get it at 3%. It's an awesome deal, and you can do it from the U.S. or Canada. They've got an app you can download, but you can also just go straight through their website at ExpressCoin.com. You can pay with a money order or check and get your cryptocurrency. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive and they are a licensed money services business at ExpressCoin.com. We've been talking a lot about file sharing. It's gone into a conversation now about the music and the recording industries and these ridiculous uh, extortion rates that they're charging, bars. We just had a guy call. He knows a lady with a bar in the, I think it was Tallahassee area. No, actually, Panama City was where he was calling from. But uh, anyway, he knows somebody with a bar, and she was told she has to pay $4,000, nearly $4,000 per year, to the Society of European Stage Authors and Composers, a.k.a. CSAC, as well as uh, BMI and ASCAP, CSAC being apparently one of the smaller organizations still demanding a ridiculous amount of money, and who knows what BMI and ASCAP are charging these guys. Not cheap. So, Ian, I I had a thought. Yes. We need to come up with some sort of... uh, association of music people and just go around and tell bars they owe us money because they might wind up playing a song by one of the artists signed to us. It's ridiculous. And and as was pointed out, they do send agents into these bars to sit in there and listen to what's coming over the speakers. That's how they bust these guys for doing that. Now, actually, I was talking sort of we were wondering aloud about these things, about the fees and requirements and all that. And uh, you were actually looking up, we were both looking up Happy Birthday during the right, break. Right, because you had mentioned about uh, Happy Birthday, you wind up getting fined if you're saying Happy Birthday the way that 
people have been doing it since at least 1912. If it's a public performance, which each time that you're at Chili's or whatever, and the you know if they actually were to sing Happy Birthday, it would be considered a public performance. Depending on how you define public performance, if you sing it to three other people, then you're performing for someone. Well, I guess the argument would be that if it is in a private party at your home, that is not a public performance. But the, that if it is in a publicly open business, then it would be a public performance. What if you rent the entire business and say, we're your only customers today? You might have an argument in that case. I've actually got a whole art, argu- or an article about Happy Birthday. We can get into that, too. But actually, I got a, um, a message here on Skype from Steve. He's the program director at WGAW AM in Gardner, Massachusetts. He's listening uh, tonight, and he adds in this detail. Streaming broadcast music radio at a bar requires payments to ASCAP, BMI, and CSACs. We were speculating that it might not. Uh, he says, all talk and news radio stations must pay yearly fees to ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC, even though those stations don't play music. Community summer concerts by municipalities must also pay licensing fees for music performed by bands, and music performed during school concerts must pay for the use of the music. So even news talk radio stations are paying these extortion fees I guess because Rush Limbaugh is going to play uh, The Pretenders for 20 seconds at the beginning of his show, somehow that means that uh, those radio stations are on the hook. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. And the happy birthday thing, I thought that this case had been settled, but apparently it's still in court in the, oh, the case Central to overturn. District of California. To, to wipe out copyright on happy birthday. Right, so the case is Rupa Maria v. Warner Chappell Music, Mm -hmm. and the most recent article that I found on this was from May of this year, where the judge is asking for more proof that the copyright had been abandoned. Is that the allegation that it has been abandoned? Well, the allegation is that it's in the public domain mm. because of how old it is. How old is it? How old does it have to be to be in the public domain? That's a very tricky question <laughs> because, and you're laughing, but it's a tricky question because it depends on whether or not it was a corporate uh, entity that created oh. the thing. Oh, 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 if oh. it was a living person that created the thing, it's based partly on the date of creation and partly on the death of the person. This was created by apparently two sisters from Louisville back in 1893, Mildred well, and Patty Hill. That that was the uh, music, not the words. Oh, really? So the music came from Good Morning to All. Also, some people call it uh, Good Morning, Dear Teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, the words, Happy Birthday to You, with the music, was first published in 1912 that anybody is aware of. So depending on if that was put together by a single person and they died after like 1925, then it would be 70 years after their death if it was by a living person and they died before then then it would have been in public domain before that if unless some corporate entity bought the copyright and then mm. renewed it at a certain time before 1960 something Jeez. so it's very convoluted and i would love to give you a straight answer but yeah, I, I don't know let's talk to kyle he's in savannah georgia you're on free talk live hello kyle kyle in georgia going once Kyle in Savannah, going twice. Tell you what, we'll put Kyle on hold. Maybe there's some technical difficulties at the network studios. But, of course, you can join us on, oh, our ISDN line apparently crashed. Yikes. Well, let's try. We can try Kyle again over here on the Comrex Access. We have backups. Kyle, are you with us this time? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We have you. Oh, all right, Jeff. Um, Last night you guys brought up... uh Facebook data mining, basically how you uh, consent to be in mind by using their service for free and whatnot. Um, and Daryl seemed like that was kind of a, a big topic, but there's a bunch of other uh, stuff like that that might have potentially worse damage, so like 
I was just thinking of on my way home. Uh, I use Waze all the time, and the type of data they could be getting off of that. So you're talking about data mining. You're, uh, are you concerned about the use of Waze? I'm a little, I guess I'm a little confused about where you're going with this. Um, just kind of something I thought of. Listen to you guys uh, archive from last night and. Uh, Stand by. Know, we'll bring it back. We concerned. can discuss it further here in moments. Waze is a an application for phones that is sort of a maps based thing. You can see where cops are located and report things on the roadway. It's pretty cool, actually. There's more coming up. Free Talk Live. Have you ever wondered if you could make electric, light, or heat in your home for free? How about a motor that charges batteries at the same time? What if this also restores useless batteries and saves you lots of money? Come to our Renaissance Charge Conference Workshop on August 15th and 16th in Fort Lauderdale. Visit r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com for details. Or call 208-304-2954. 208-304-2954. More and more people are discovering the incredible benefits of alkalizing the body. And there's no better product for it than AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds, just a few drops in water will rid your body of harmful waste and give you more vibrance and vigor than you've had in years. Now buy two bottles and get $10 off your order. Call 800-518-7615 or visit ALKAVision.com. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Hey, 
And we're back with more Free Talk Live. It is the live Saturday edition. You can, of course, join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about things like the music industry, copyright, uh, the, the Pirate Bay founder has actually been acquitted, which is awesome news in a, a Belgian court. So, of course, Pirate Bay is continuing on. Even if their founders had been put in jail, the Pirate Bay would continue. It is a fairly robust file-sharing uh, website. And also you know, sort of discussing all manner of tangential issues to that. Is Blu-ray going to be the last physical media? So see, these are some of the things we've covered here. You can bring up anything you want to discuss with us. Also on the way, the Satanic Temple and the Statue of Baphomet that they are working on is going to be unveiled in Detroit. We can talk more about that as well. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, just a moment ago, and we still have him with us, Kyle is on the line in Savannah, Georgia. You can join us online, of course, over at freetalklive.com, and please enjoy the features there. And please, download whatever you want. Download as much Free Talk Live as you like. Share it with people. Download it and edit it if you want to. Edit it to make it sound like we said things we didn't say. I don't care. I don't believe in intellectual property. You can do that. If somebody's made soundboards out of us. I don't know if you have All one yet, All the soundboards are hilarious. Yes, I have There's one. There's one for you? The one for me is not safe for not radio safe for play. Okay. Uh, because they've pulled a bunch of stuff from Black Sheep Rising. Where you are uh, uncensored on blacksheeprising.org. Yes. So, yeah, very cool. Please, you know, I don't believe in intellectual property. I think sharing things is a good thing. I believe that file sharing means that we have more to choose from and that artists will actually have more possibility of, of reaching new people, new ears and eyes, which means there's more likely there's people going to come out to see a live performance and maybe they'll they'll buy the album if they want to support your work. But also we were talking with Kyle a moment ago about uh, data mining, and it was a topic on the show last night. You were on Friday nights as well, yes. uh, Daryl. And uh, Kyle, are you back with us? Yes, I'm here. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, we got you. So you were, we were talking last night about data mining uh, on Facebook, meaning that you as a Facebook customer, and I'm sure lots of you listening to the show are Facebook users, you are, uh, I guess when I say customer, one of the people that is using the service, you're not buying anything from Facebook. You're actually giving information to yeah, Facebook. You're not the customer. Right. You're the product. You're, right. Thank you for the clarification. You're giving your personal information uh, to Facebook, they're using that personal information to market products, which is advertising, market advertising uh, to different companies that want to reach maybe you. And so that's the whole point of Facebook. At least that's its, its main driving purpose is to, of course, connect people with advertisers. And it's not so different from, you know, what we do here on Free Talk Live to some extent. We have to connect people with advertisers in order to keep offering the show on radio stations for free. That's just sort of part and parcel of the thing that we do. But, of course, now with the Internet, we can, if we want to, cut out the middleman, so to speak, and we can go directly to our listeners. But we don't do that 100% because we want to exist in both spheres. We want to exist in the radio sphere, and we want to exist in the Internet world as well. But, Kyle, you were calling about Waze, which is an app, and uh, I'm a user of Waze. Uh, Daryl, do you have uh, the Waze? I do not. Kyle, and you are also a user, right, Kyle? Yes, I am. And so Waze is an app that you can download. I, I presume it's available for iPhone. It's definitely on Android. That is an it's better than your average maps app. You know, you can go on Google Maps and you can get directions from point A to point B, but Waze will actually allow you to see where the police are on the roads, which is I think one of the major features that's the big selling point of Waze, at least among libertarian types. And further, I, th I think Google does this too, but, you know, you get uh, feedback on whether there's a road that's got bad traffic and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, the default uh, GPS sort of thing on my phone will show where the traffic is. It'll show if there's a traffic jam with, like, different colors for the road. So right. if it's at a standstill, it's red. If right. it's and just Waze has slow, it's yellow. So, but Kyle, you were concerned about the data mining that Waze might be doing. Is that right? Uh, not so much concern. I just kind of want to get uh, your guys' thought, especially uh, Daryl, since he was uh, he seemed concerned about Facebook data mining. Um, uh, Facebook, I mean, yeah, they can get some useful information about social interactions, and you can inadvertently leak your own personal information if you don't know how to use it properly. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you know, if you're a smart user of Facebook, you can keep pretty much anything you don't want on there off there, and you really only give them what you want to give them. Ways, on the other hand, uh, 
I mean, granted, it's the same concept. You're giving you're giving them information to get their services in return, but you're giving location information, your travel, your, your routines, and whatnot. Um, if we're concerned about data mining, I think that one might be a little bit more potentially uh, harmful. Yeah, I uh, have the GPS on. function on my phone turned off by default. So I will only use that if I'm traveling somewhere and need directions because I'm not entirely They'll positive They'll still find you going. if they want to find you. I mean, if the state comes and they serve a subpoena to uh, Straight Talk or whoever your provider is, then they're going to turn over whatever data they have on where you are and where you've been, and they can still triangulate your position uh, with their radio towers. So Right. It just makes it a little more difficult when you don't have the GPS on. I don't know if it's going to make it that much more difficult, honestly, Daryl. And, you know, maybe they don't actually turn off the GPS. Maybe it just shows you the indicators turning off, but maybe it's still actually on at some level. So who knows? Yeah. But <laughs> the the discussion that we had last night about Facebook, it wasn't necessarily the data mining that I had brought up. It was the fact that Facebook will conduct social experiments on people without you know, asking them, do you want to be part of a survey or do you want to take a test? So that is what I had the issue with. And on Facebook, yes, I know that I'm the product. On, you know, any of the free social networks, you are the product. So that's not anything that, you know, I was even bringing up last night it's not what i was necessarily you know concerned mm. about and i wouldn't even say that i am concerned because i have very little of my facebook as public well but even then they could still mine your information right like they're still it, what there's two different things we're talking about here there's what you let into the public view on facebook right. and then there's there's everything you upload to facebook right so everything you've given facebook even if it's locked down to only a specific set of friends is still information that they can use to mine data about you and then adver certainly. sell advertising certainly uh but you know he, he was talking about uh you know things that you upload Everybody can see unless you have your settings set to a certain thing. Well, I think actually what Kyle was saying, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, was that he can choose to not upload anything at all to Facebook. If he doesn't want Facebook to have some data about him, he is ultimately in charge of that. Is that right, Kyle? Yes. Right. And I saw with Ian on uh, basically whether it's explicit or implicit. Um, uh, as uh, Daryl was saying, uh, I think he just kind of overstretches kind of what a, uh, so, uh, a psychological experiment is. I mean, you could do the same thing. You could call looking at uh, how the market fluctuates and what people are buying and what people are selling as a social experiment as well, if you kind of extend it that far. Mm. Yeah, I see that where you're coming from. Kyle, thanks for the call tonight. Let's talk to Dave. He's in North California listening to KGOE and Eureka. Hey, Dave. Hey, uh, I so much appreciate your show. Thanks. Uh, one thing that's been troubling me for a long time, I go back a ways to when Bev Harris was re demonstrating to us right before our eyes how you can go on electronic voting equipment and flip an election any way you want. So I've seen, I live in a country where there's one fraction of 1% is always able to get 51% of the government offices. And I wonder, how is that in a democracy? Do people so easily vote to their own detriment? Or is somebody electronically flipping millions of votes here and there until it comes out the way they want? But it doesn't really all... matter, does it, Dave? I mean, yeah, look, I see where you're coming from, and there has been evidence that the electronic voting machines have back doors and they're hackable and things like that. And so I think there's real concerns there. But ultimately, in most elections, certainly at the national level, whoever wins, we all lose, don't we? Thanks for the call tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Whether it's Hillary Clinton or Jeb Bush or whoever, it's going to be bad for the United States. 855-450-FREE. No amount of voting is going to change things at the federal level. But maybe I'm just jaded and cynical. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? 
stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. And now, a touching moment while staying in touch with Geico. Just the other night, as I gazed up into the sky, I saw a shooting star. In that moment, I made a wish that Geico would be available 24-7, by phone, on the web, or with the Geico app. After that, I realized my wish had already come true. So basically, I had just wasted a perfectly good wish. Then I started to think about dolphins and felt better right away. Geico. Anywhere. Anytime. Now, a twice as nice Twin Kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals Twin Kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the Twin Kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. Have you ever wondered if you could make electric, light, or heat in your home for free? How about a motor that charges batteries at the same time? What if this also restores useless batteries and saves you lots of money? Come to our Renaissance Charge Conference Workshop on August 15th and 16th in Fort Lauderdale. Visit r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com for details. Or call 208-304-2954. 208-304-2954. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is it's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 reasons liberty lives in new hampshire a documentary by free state project early movers watch it free at 101 reasonsfilm.com 101 reasonsfilm.com you can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. The live Saturday edition continues here tonight. You've got me, Ian. And Daryl. And we're going to continue with your phone calls and thoughts. You can also join us Online anytime at freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you appreciate the work that we do here at Free Talk Live, spreading the ideas of freedom as far and as wide as possible, then you can back the show for five bucks a month by contributing to the AMP program. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. AMP.freetalklive.com is where you can go to get signed up. You get perks. You get access to the AMP-only call in lines, the AMP-only podcast, AMP-only Facebook group. Go and get all the details and get signed up at amp.freetalklive.com. That five bucks a month matters to us because it allows us to uh, continue 
the outreach that we've been doing, contacting radio stations all across the country to expose them to Free Talk Live and hopefully get them to take the show. And you can help us do that and you get those perks. So please go to amp.freetalklive.com, amp.freetalklive.com. Let's go and continue here. We've got Kurt. He's in Lynchburg listening to WLNI-FM. Hey, Kurt. Hey, guys. Welcome. Um, I was just uh, heard you talking about Facebook, and uh, I myself have actually just told all my friends, uh, and I've been whittling it down. I used to have 500 people I hardly knew, and now I've actually got 91 people I actually know. Mm. And um, I can't totally get off it because I actually run a few pa- uh, Facebook pages yep. for uh, groups and whatnot. But I'm, uh, I'm done um, – with the social experiment that you know that social engineering that is facebook i'm i've told them i said i'm done i said i'm keeping you family members i'll keep a few of you that are really close friends but it'll probably be 20 of you and that's it and don't take it personal and i'm out of here and i'm tired of the content that facebook decides it wants me to see uh seeing that and i'm tired of my my thoughts and my expressions being dictated to my friends as Facebook determines that it doesn't want, you know, does or doesn't want people to see the way I think about things. And I see it all the time. Uh, you know, I post some benign thing about a cat and everyone comments on it. I post something, you know, pissy or, or even radical and nobody says anything. And I said, there's no way. And I asked, did you see that? They said, no, I never saw that. Interesting. Well, yeah. So you're talking about the Facebook algorithms that determine how things are promoted amongst your friends, meaning that you know, you have all these friends, but you're not seeing all of their updates that they make unless you do like a close friend with that person. There is a way to make sure that you're more likely to see their updates. But- right. So I use the list mm-hmm. to make sure that I see things from people that I want to see things from. And but even then you're not seeing everything, right? Right. Even then I'm not seeing everything. And I know I'm not seeing everything. But the reason I started using list was because the like main front page of Facebook, there's so much script and everything else mm-hmm. going on. It was just taking all of the memory and slowing my computer down super bad. It's a junky website, for sure. Right. So if you it use is, the it's list, it's not me. using as much script. Mm. So it doesn't you know want to crash your entire computer. So that's why I started using it. But I recently went through and purged out about a thousand people off of my uh, wow. friends list. So I was up over like eighteen hundred friends. Now Nothing I'm like down a good to friend around seven hundred. Kurt, anything else you want to share? Well, I, I did that myself. Well, I think the the big thing is is that people are using Facebook as a, as an outlet to get out their frustrations and their anger and just their their righteous outrage of what's going on in America. When they what they should be doing is getting out and doing something, whether it's nailing their list of grievances to the courthouse door or, you know, voting or making calls or something. Instead, they're like, well, I've done my duty. I posted a story about how John Boehner's a traitor, so let's let's move on now. I think that's a great point. That is the other real bad thing about Facebook is it's sort of – there's a dichotomy, I guess, going on there um, where – On one hand, Facebook seems really useful to connect people together, and it does have that capability where, you know, you are easily able to reach out to people that that you know through Facebook. But on the other hand, what you're saying is absolutely true, Kurt, that despite the fact that you've got this big network of all these people that are connected to you, it's almost impossible to motivate people to actually do something, to get off of Facebook and to go do something in the real world. And we encounter this all the time here uh, in New Hampshire, where we have the Free State Project, of course, which is a movement of libertarian types converging into one place, one geographic place, which is New Hampshire, so we can be more effective at doing activism. Now, I'm not saying activism doesn't happen. It certainly does. But I feel like that Facebook really harms it more than it helps it. Um, You know, they have events you can make on Facebook, and that's good. But the events on Facebook, frequently the like the, the amount of people that say they're going to come, they don't show up. Or sometimes more people show up than they say they're going to show up on Facebook. So it's not even a useful indicator as far as how many people are going to attend something when they say they're going to something. Because on Facebook, an event, you can say you're going or maybe or decline. And it, it never even comes close, usually, the actual turnout to what Facebook is predicting. 
And there's so many events sometimes you can get the sort of event fatigue. Like right. I've I've turned off invites to all events. I will not get any emails notifying me that I'm getting invited to something. And sometimes that hurts me because I'll miss something I actually would have wanted to go to because I never got the invite in the first place. Well, I don't get emails, but I still have the notification that will Somehow pop I've up. turned that off too. I've uh, basically avoided getting invites on pretty much everything. Every now and then I'll see one, but... I don't. Uh, I don't see them most do, of the time. Do you ever look at the things off to the left side of the profile where it'll show like your favorites and then have little numbers next to those? Yeah. One of the things that's on that left side, or uh -huh. at least it should be, is events. Right. And just like click on that because there's a number next to it, and then it'll but there's show so you many everything of you're them. invited to. There's like a zillion things that people invite me to because I've got a thousand friends or whatever. And so it's just, you know, signal to noise ratio. There's right. too much there's too much noise. Kurt, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate it. And then of course, you know, that left hand column, there's a zillion things over there too. You know, if you've got pages that you administer right. as I do and you know, and it's just such a distraction. And then the other thing that Facebook is a pain in the butt with is you know, it seems that okay, yeah, you can use Facebook to organize. I'm not saying you can't do that, and we do. But on the other hand, there's all these petty things that go on on Facebook where people are arguing about stuff. Yes. And people who probably wouldn't have the same argument in real life face-to-face -face will have an argument and it'll draw out for a day or two on Facebook. And it, it seems so much more important because it's happening there. And it's, you know, every time somebody posts, the message gets, the thread gets bumped to the top of a group. And oh, yeah, I so, hate that. Well, on the one hand, I hate it, but at the same time, it's good because then you don't have to like scroll through. Okay, there was this post five days ago. But the drama threads then go to the top, and right. they outclass or outpace right. the important so it's threads. It's one of those you know love hate sort of things to where like I like the concept of active threads being at the top. Yeah. But it's a pain when it's a drama thread. Well, okay, so here's one of the technical reasons why it fails, why Facebook is, is miserable for this. I mean, yes, you're right. Things going to the top, that's kind of a typical thing that you see on Facebook, on forums and Facebook and things like that. But at least with a forum, you can move a thread. So, yes. so I'll give you an example of this. There's the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. It's been around for a long time. It's died off a lot since Facebook, basically. But it still exists. So if somebody posts something in the Shire Society forum in the wrong place, you know, they post some thread about uh, Keen and they post it in the Manchester forum, I can, as an administrator, move that thread to the proper forum. But on Facebook, that's impossible. Each, Even if you administer multiple groups, you can't move a message from one group to another group. Right. And so basically, you can all you can do is just delete the, the offensive thread, which that creates more... You know, Offense. people get angry about that. Right. Ah, freedom of Why speech. Why are you censoring? Yeah. And so so you can do that, or you can do something that hides the thread, that sort of keeps it in the forum, but only allows the people who've commented on it to see it. And that's kind of a sneaky thing uh, to do, but it's, it's an option, I guess. Right. But because you can't really move threads to more appropriate places, it just means that, again, that signal-to-noise ratio is a problem uh, on Facebook and people love it. They love Facebook. They don't want to go anywhere else. So it's like, I feel like I like the last caller where I feel like I have to be there, even right. though I don't really want to be, but I do really want to be because I'm kind of addicted to it. Right. And real quick, I, I want to sort of answer one of the questions from a caller that was in the last segment mm -hmm. where he was talking about elections and how is it that you have a party that wins 51% of the vote, but they don't win 51% of the seats. Quite simply, gerrymandering. So yeah. what gerrymandering is for people that you know aren't really familiar, it's where the parties, and that's who in most states winds up drawing the districts, they draw the districts to benefit themselves. So basically, you have elected officials that are choosing their constituents, not the other way around. And I just ran some numbers to prove my theory here. In 12 districts, you could have a single party get 61% of the vote in two of those, 49% in the others. They still have 51% of the vote. They win two seats. All Thank right, we'll you, come Jerry back Mandering. with more Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Hour number three is next. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. A few days ago, Brooke Tudin posted an inspirational quote on her wall that got 17 likes and three comments. Thumbs up, Brooke. Geico also wants to make a comment. In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico. And nothing says inspiration better than saving money. Well, except for those posters that say things like teamwork, excellence, and make it happen. Hashtag keep climbing. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, July 11th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.61 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,163 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $293. Antiwar.com reports fighting picked up early Friday in Yemen with the hours leading up to the ceasefire, which began at 23.59 local time, seeing several clashes inside several major cities, including Taiz. Then the ceasefire began, and almost immediately thereafter, Saudi warplanes were attacking Taiz. Reports are that Saudi airstrikes against Taiz began less than an hour after the ceasefire began, with three different strikes reported hitting Houthi targets, including a camp and a military convoy. Pro-Saudi fighters had claimed the Houthis were violating the ceasefire by continuing to advance into the city once it began, and suggesting that was the pretext for the Saudi strike. Saudi officials were spurning the truce before even began, insisting they did not trust the Houthis to honor it. The Houthis, for their part, insisted that they were holding their ground in Taiz against an offensive by pro-Saudi forces, and the airstrikes compounded on that truce violation. The UN is urging both sides to honor the ceasefire, and despite these incidents, strikes appear to have halted across most of the country. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports Office of Personnel Management Director Catherine Archuleta resigned on Friday amid growing criticism over her handling of a massive data breach that resulted in the theft of personal information from millions of people. Archuleta, the director since November 2013, personally submitted her letter of resignation Friday morning to President Obama, saying new leadership was needed at the Federal Personnel Agency to move beyond the current challenges. The president accepted her resignation. Archuleta said in a statement, Today, I inform the OPM workforce that I am stepping down as the leader of this remarkable agency and the remarkable people who work for it. This morning, I offered and the president accepted my resignation as the director of the Office of Personnel Management. I conveyed to the president that I believe it is best for me to step aside and allow new leadership to step in, enabling the agency to move beyond the current challenges and allowing the people at OPM to continue their important work. 
Beth Cobert, the Deputy Director of Management at the Office of Management and Budget, will fill in temporarily until a replacement is found. On Thursday, the Office of Personnel Management announced the data breach in late 2014 was more extensive than first thought, saying information from 21.5 million people were compromised in addition to the personal data of 4.2 million current and former federal employees. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports, a divided Ohio appeals court panel on Friday said it would not force a municipal judge to issue arrest warrants for Cleveland police officers involved in the fatal shooting of 12-year-old Tamir Rice in a city park last November. A group of community activists who have sought to bring charges against the officers directly through a little-known Ohio law had asked the 8th District Court of Appeals to compel the judge to issue arrest warrants in the case. Cleveland Municipal Court Judge Ronald Adrien in June found probable cause for Officer Timothy Lohman, who shot Rice and his partner, Frank Garnbach, to face charges in the shooting. Appellate Court Judge Frank Calabrese Jr. wrote in the 2-1 to one ruling denying their request that the community leaders could ask a higher court to review Adrien's decision. Judge Anita Mays said Adrien should have been compelled to issue the warrants. Lohman shot Rice twice within seconds of arriving outside a city recreation center on November 22nd in response to an emergency call of a man with a gun. Rice was playing with an airsoft-type replica handgun that shoots pellets and died the day after being shot. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Publicists everywhere agreed this week that the nation's celebrities are in dire need of more fame, stressing that all six billion of the world's populace should know every U.S. celebrity by name and face by now. Publicists are calling for an emergency influx of buzz, heat, press, and word of mouth to be administered to the nation's celebrities immediately in order to prevent crucial fame levels from becoming dangerously low. Novelist Edward Milligan told reporters this week that in his new book, By the Water's Edge, he has fleshed out in meticulous detail his own huge and stunningly shitty world. Using in-depth research and the power of his own imagination, Milligan was able to conjure out of thin air every hackneyed character, trite street name, and horseshit backstory in the fictional town of Connors Cove. The complete f***ing hack proudly said he has created a universe that readers will feel they can actually reach out and touch. Sources say the prolific writer has not yet been punched repeatedly in the face. In other news, McDonald's opens a new senior citizen play place. This is the Onion News Network. We are back with more Free Talk Live, and you can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the Satanic Temple and the statue of Baphomet that they've been promising looks like it is going to be unveiled very soon. Uh, we'll tell you more about that here. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Daryl. We've been talking a lot about uh, file sharing and the music industry, extorting artists, uh, copyrights, happy birthday, apparently. Is it going to have its copyright overturned? Lots of the topics we've been discussing so far include those, but you can also bring up anything you want. That's why we call the show Free Talk Live. And you can do that by dialing us at uh, toll-free number 855-450-FREE. Also, you can Skype into the show. Skype username here is lrn.fm. Just send a quick contact request on Skype. We'll approve you. And it'll be good to go to call from that point forward. Pete has been waiting patiently through the news in South Carolina, in Columbia, listening to WQXL. Hey, Pete. Hey, guys. Welcome. I was going to say, uh, as far as his, uh, data mining goes, it yeah. sounds like some of your listeners, are, and a lot of people, um, have a very naive view of how significant it is and the information that they're actually sharing. So if you just have a Facebook account and you sign in, for instance, um, and you don't have to put up what your birthday is or your likes or this or that, just based on who your friends are and where you sign in and how you sign in, um, in addition to all of the credit card data that they have, all of the purchases that you make, um, 15 years ago, 
they had a pretty good indicator within like 85% as to whether or not you're going to get divorced based on your credit card balances, your income, and where you live. Uh, nowadays, really? it's amazing. Oh, it's amazing what they have. And there have been, there've been examples where women were sent congratulations on being pregnant by a target company before the women knew that they were pregnant. Um, and I don't know if that's based on the products that they're buying at Target, but, uh, you know, Probably. credit cards, store credit cards and others are constantly sending out things nowadays. Um, well, that's true. That's possible, but you got to think about it. I mean, you could always stop at another place to get, say, feminine products. So mm-hmm. they had to have some other, you know, rubric to figure that out. And mm-hmm. um, it, it's really impressive the amount of data that they can get about uh, everything from your sexuality and your religion to your income and all sorts of things that you don't think that you're sharing. Uh, but actually, there's there's a metric because this data mining isn't just with what you put on there. Uh, there's terabytes of information that they're comparing to other users, uh, discrete users that you interact with and how you interact with those users. Um, so it's the data mining is actually so much more powerful than most people really realize. Hmm. Are you involved in the industry? No. You know, I was a federal agent about 15 years ago on an electronic crimes task force. And I mean, what I know, I'm, I would be a dinosaur now uh, in comparison. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, if you, if you read, this is the thing I think that's the scariest, uh, for human behavior. I mean, when they've a new kind of trend with free economics and all these is behavioral, uh, economics. And what's happened is they've realized that people aren't all we all say, oh, if the market works this way, everybody will act in their best interest. And we realize that people don't really always act in their best interest. And what's happened is with data mining is that a lot of major companies and corporations are actually able to predict your behavior nowadays likely better than you are able to predict your own behavior. So that's um, creepy. if you think it's just by what you're putting up on Facebook or what you're putting up somewhere, hmm. there's a whole lot more to it than that. Um, and now with our GPS locations, whether it's pinpoint or I keep mine off as well, but I agree with what uh, one of you was saying earlier to the other that that likely doesn't, you know, just the towers that you're pinging off and other things will give uh, most of the information. And with satellites now strong enough to um, reach, uh, and not just military uh, satellite information, but um, with pole cameras and things like that, keeping up with the uh, license plates of cars and that, it's actually not very difficult even without your cell phone on or your cell phone on you yeah that's true where somebody most likely is if uh, but, uh if you don't want, want your tr- if you don't want your cell phone to be identified as far as wh- or where its location is by the network then the only solution is to take the battery out and that will solve your problem there but, are some people yeah. that even claim that with the battery out it that's can ridiculous. still be right yeah that's that's total i i know it's ridiculous conspiracy and theory horse poo <laughs> But there, there are people that are going to claim yes, all kinds of that's things. True. Hey, Pete, good call, man. Thanks for the info tonight. All right, thanks, guys. I, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number here. Let's continue. Uh, actually, go over to Skype where Stephen is on the line. Stephen in California, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Hey, you guys were talking about Amazon Prime the other night and uh, using Purse.io and only being able to receive your items with the Prime if they had the membership. Um, but if you buy a gift card for the exact amount of your item from Amazon on your wish list, you can then put that on your account and have the tracking number and get your Prime as well. So, Okay, so t- oh, okay, slow you- down for a second here. You're talking about Purse, which is a new sponsor of Free Talk Live. I've been a huge fan of Purse since before they came on board with Free Talk Live. But we like to give out the Purse Free Talk Live URL. It's purse.freetalklive.com. That takes you to a special landing page that when you sign up for Purse will allow Free Talk Live to get a very small portion of each purchase uh, that you make at that point. So please go to purse.freetalklive.com to get signed up. I guess the one thing I didn't know, I knew you could buy Amazon gift cards through Purse. So if you want to save 20 to 25% or whatever, even more possibly, uh, but the, the average is 20% on things bought in the United States on Purse. You can get anything you want on Amazon at 20% off with purse uh, by paying with bitcoin including gift cards but the thing that i have not yet seen work because i've tried it is i think you can only get the physical gift cards with purse have you been able to get electronic diff- gift card delivery with purse because i haven't seen that um i haven't uh tried it yet i have a uh, a bit on there but it hasn't been accepted yet i was going to try it right now but i just thought that um, why would it be any different to buy a gift card at the amount of 20%? I could not get Amazon. The reason why I couldn't get it to work, and again, I'm not saying 
maybe, maybe it's just me. Um, I, what? Okay, so for people that don't know, when you're on purse.freetalklive.com, what you do is you uh, have an Amazon wish list. You add items to the wish list that you want. Then you ingest that wish list into purse.freetalklive.com. the way you do it to get a bigger percentage. You can do right. instant buy. Yeah. Where you don't put anything in a wish list and it gives you like a guaranteed 8%. Yeah, I've never tried the instant buy, so I can't say for sure this would be different. But let me explain what happened with me with trying the wish list. Basically, Amazon would not allow me to add that item to the wish list. I, you can't add an electronically delivered gift card to a wish list. At least in my experience, I could not do it. I, I've tried multiple times in different in different ways to do that. So I ended up having to add the physical gift card, which worked. So I added, like, let's say I want to get a $200 gift card at 20% off. I go and I add a $200 gift card to my wish list, ingest that wish list into purse, and then it goes into the system. I select 20% off, and somebody will buy it for me, which is pretty awesome. But then you still get, you know, you still have to wait a day to get the uh, the gift card. Amazon actually ships their gift cards. Amazingly, they ship them overnight, which is crazy. It's like a one-day shipping on their gift card. So, I mean, I would rather get the electronic delivery. That way it can be instantaneous, but it just doesn't seem to work in my experience. And you're saying you you did successfully add an electronic gift card to your wish list? Well, yeah, it, uh, it said the amount was on there, and uh, I did it with the, the grocery as well. Huh. Um, I guess there's a lot of uh, maybe there's some technical details I'm missing on this, um, but you know, purse is really amazing. However, you decide to use it, and there are different ways to to approach it. So I would recommend dropping by purse. Well, well, either Lab. way, you know, just getting the gift card at twenty percent off, you know, is a uh, is still better than. Yeah, because what we, what you were saying was that you would get the gift card at a discount, then you could use your discounted gift card to buy things on Amazon instantly and get your Amazon Prime at the same time. So thanks, Stephen, for your call tonight, man. We're kind of break, you're breaking up on your connection a little bit, but thank you for the call. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And it looks like you can do the electronic a $50 electronic gift card through the instant buy, mm -hmm. which saves you 5%. So it's five, not eight, but okay. you know, close enough. And that's then cool. That's an instant buy, a instead of having to wait a right. you know, couple of hours, maybe a couple of days. I don't mind waiting personally. I mean, that's uh, right. That's but what there, there are so some awesome. people that you know, when they want to buy something, they want, they want to buy it right now. Yep, that's true. So you know, for the people that don't want to wait but still want a discount, you can get five percent immediately. Purse.freetalklive.com. You can get all those discounts, but you got to pay with Bitcoin. Yes. That's the thing, which is a great reason to go and get some Bitcoin, which you can get at expresscoin.com. We'll come back. We've got the Satanic Temple and their statue of Baphomet, which is going to be revealed later this month, apparently, in Detroit. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can bring up anything you want to join us here on Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever, Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. 
It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bothered to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition, and that means it's the same as every other night. We do the show seven nights a week live, and as always, You can call in and bring up anything you want to discuss with you tonight. It's Ian here. And Daryl. And uh, don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You get to create the content there. And you can get interactive in a variety of ways. Our chat room, for instance, is available to you at any time. It's most busy during Free Talk Live's uh, live content, uh, or as well as some of the other LRN.FM shows. But it's there for you around the clock over at cam.freetalklive.com. It actually gives you access to the webcam, too, which it's all free over at freetalklive.com. So please enjoy the various different features we have there. Now, if you want to still talk about the music industry or Facebook and data mining or the Pirate Bay founders being acquitted, you can certainly do that. We're going to move on to the Satanic Temple, unless you had something else to add, Daryl. I did not. So the Satanic Temple has been in the news over the last year or so, I would say, uh, with their plans to put a statue of Baphomet at the Oklahoma State Capitol grounds. If you recall, there was a Ten Commandments monument that was at the Oklahoma State Capitol grounds. And essentially it was there with government permission. It had been there for for a little while, from what I understand. The folks from the Satanic Temple decided, well, you know, freedom of religion and everything, we should be able to get our own statue. If you're going to let the Ten Commandments statue stand on the state property, then you should allow anyone who... Any religious group who wants to have themselves a statue there also do the same thing. And, of course, what Oklahoma did after the Satanic Temple announced that was they announced the Oklahoma government announced that they would be having a moratorium on any new statues being allowed on the Oklahoma State Capitol grounds. Subsequently, someone ran a car into the Ten Commandments statue, and I don't know if it has been rebuilt since then. It's been a little while since I've followed the case. I know that there has actually been a court case about this. In Oklahoma? In Oklahoma, and the Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled that the Oklahoma Constitution 
basically there, there's i forget the exact wording but there's a prohibition on displaying anything that favors one religion over another right so the oklahoma state supreme court basically said it's got to go the governor of Oklahoma came out a couple of days ago and said, well, we need to change the Constitution so wow. that it allows, is allowed to stay because they've got one of these in Texas and the U.S. Supreme Court said that one's OK. So there, the current court order is to remove the Ten Commandments statue? I that believe right? that's the court order. Yes. Interesting. I wonder if it's actually been pulled down at this point. Uh, so if you know more, you're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450 free. But according to RT.com, the Satanic Temple plans to unveil a large statue dedicated to the devil in the city of Detroit later this month, despite intensified protests by church leaders and residents that have caused the original venue to back out of the event. Originally slated to be unveiled on July 21st, or excuse me, 25th, at Burt's Warehouse in Detroit. Before the venue canceled its involvement, the nine-foot bronze statue of Baphomet, a goat-like idol with a man's body, horns, and wings, originally associated with the Knights Templar. The statue reportedly weighs one ton and is, again, made of bronze. It was already mentioned. On its website, the Satanic Temple said the state is, quote, intended to complement and contrast the Ten Commandments monument. I think they mean the statue, not the state. Uh, the statue is intended to complement and contrast the Ten Commandments monument that already resides on Oklahoma State Capitol grounds. The spokesperson for the Satanic Temple, Lucian Greaves, said in a statement, quote, earlier this year, that the statue will serve as a beacon calling for compassion and empathy among all living creatures. The statue will also have a functional purpose as a chair where people of all ages may sit on the top of Satan for inspiration and contemplation. Hold on. Are they... Are they making this of Satan or Baphomet? Because those are... They're different, right? Different entities, I thought. That's what I thought, too. I can't say I'm intimately familiar with Satanism and the various different uh, symbols or whatever. Here's Baphomet from Wikipedia. It's a term originally used to describe an idol or other deity the Knights Templar were accused of worshipping and that subsequently was incorporated into disparate occult and mystical traditions it appeared as a term for a pagan idol in trial transcripts in the Inquisition of the Knights Templar in the early 14th century. The name first came into popular English usage in the 19th century with debate and speculation on the reasons for the suppression of the Templars. Since 1856, the name Baphomet has been associated with a sabbatical goat image drawn by Eliphas Levy, which contains binary elements representing the sum total of the universe, e.g. male and female, good and evil, Etc. So I don't know. It doesn't say right there in the first paragraph that it tends to be uh, confused with Satan. Yeah. So I pulled up the uh, same thing and did the Control F, mm -hmm. which is the find function, typed in Satan. And most of the references are about the Church of Satan using Baphomet as a symbol. Hmm. Well, I guess you'll have to tell us if you know more about the Church of Satan, exactly the relationship of uh, Baphomet with it. But nonetheless, that's the symbol they've chosen here. And according to, let's see, RT, although the statue was originally meant to stand alongside the Ten Commandments monument in Oklahoma, the state Supreme Court, as you reported, Daryl, has recently ruled the monument must be removed because government property cannot be used to show support for any religion. Now, without a home for the statue, the Satanic Temple... And that, by the way, was probably the best choice for the government in Oklahoma to make because it's either all or nothing. You either allow every religion to have some sort of uh, display at the state capitol. If you're going to allow one, you have to allow others. Yes. Or you can allow none. Right? So it's yes. all or nothing. Right. But like I said, the governor of Oklahoma is saying we need to change the state constitution to allow this monument to stand. Which is crazy. Um, and I don't think that'll fly. But then again, it is Oklahoma. Right, but you know, if they change the wording to say, you know, religious uh, symbolism can be displayed on the state house, then they have to allow the Baphomet statue. Well, it sounded to me like what you were saying was the governor wanted to change it so only the Christian one would be allowed. Okay, and then that would get would be thrown overturned out by, by the a Supreme federal court. court. So right. no matter what they do, yeah, they're either not going to have the Ten Commandments statue. 
or they're going to have that plus a bunch of other stuff. Uh, according to the story at RT, the uh, without a home for the statue, the Satanic Temple is considering applying for a space near a Ten Commandments monument at the Arkansas State Capitol. According to Fox News, uh, director of the Detroit Satanic Temple chapter and their national spokeswoman, Jex Blackmore, told Fox, quote, The message behind Baphomet is a reconciliation of the opposites, not this call to arms of one against one, but a merging of the two. That's part of the reason that it can only exist standing next to the Ten Commandments. That's part of the message. We wouldn't want to proselytize as a single voice in the public square. So basically, they've now got this one-ton bronze statue of Baphomet that they'd, they'd planned to have. They'd been working on this for quite a while, but their ultimate goal of putting it in Oklahoma City is no longer on the table. So they're looking around the country to find wherever else the Ten Commandments might be in statue form and they would like to locate Baphomet next to it. Uh, we'll talk more about the Satanic Temple and the backlash that has happened in the Detroit community over this proposed revealing of the statue at a location which has su subsequently pulled out due to likely very upset people calling them, would be my guess. Your thoughts on the Satanic Temple are certainly welcome here on Free Talk Live and maybe know a thing or two about Baphomet as well. You can enlighten us. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Have you ever wondered if you could make electric, light, or heat in your home for free? How about a motor that charges batteries at the same time? What if this also restores useless batteries and saves you lots of money? Come to our Renaissance Charge Conference Workshop on August 15th and 16th in Fort Lauderdale. Visit r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com for details. Or call 208-304-2954. 208-304-2954. Now a twice as nice twin kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals twin kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the twin kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2Ominerals.com. Free Talk Live. Dear FTL, we've got Chemtrail down here in West Virginia. Be nice. You've never seen them? <laughs> Contrail disappear relatively quickly compared <laughs> to the Chemtrail. If anybody is listening that wants to fight the Chemtrails, there's things called What are you going to fight them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait a it's minute. Big big fans? Wadbusters? <laughs> I gotta give UFO hoaxers more credit. At least they go out and build a little saucer and they tie little it to a cardboard string. saucer. And they, yeah, I'd love to see a semi-legitimate website reporting anything on this particular uh, issue. I don't. I, I just I haven't don't seen. Think, it. I don't think you're gonna get that. Cause Sem I just asked semi-legitimate. You want a doctor? That's it. There's a bunch of ones. Oh, there's doctors. 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 Just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you're an expert I or mean, smart, or it doesn't even mean you're a doctor. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go on my website later on tonight, and I'll be. Dr. Manwich, okay? <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. 
besides. The people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in studio, you've got Ian. And Daryl. We're talking about the Satanic Temple. They are back in the news again. Uh, the statue that they have been building for quite a while now, has uh, it's prepared, it's done. It's apparently one ton. It's a bronze statue, nine foot tall with the statue of Baphomet, and I guess he's somehow related to the Satanic Temple. I'm not real sure exactly how, but uh, we, haven't done the, we haven't done the digging to really figure that out <laughs> yet. And so if you know more about that, you're welcome to share the history of Baphomet, 855-450-FREE. But they are planning a special unveiling in Detroit, which is the home to the organization's first chapter. Initially, this was going to be sent down to Oklahoma City at the Oklahoma State Capitol building, where it was to sit next to the Ten Commandments monument that had been there for a little while. And now the Oklahoma Supreme Court has basically said that the Ten Commandments needs to be removed because government property can't be used to show support for any religion. So that effectively prevents the Satanic Temple from uh, from locating the Baphomet in Oklahoma City. So they're trying to find a new location. And there has been a backlash from the community in Detroit. They were going to unveil it at a place called, uh, let's see, what was it? Burt's Warehouse, but I guess they've backed out. And they've made it even tougher now to pull off the group, uh, the group's revealing that they had hoped that it would be. Feeling the heat, Burt's Warehouse pulled out of the event, leaving the Satanic Temple, searching for another venue. This is according to RT.com. The group told local TV station WXYZ that it was disappointed in the decision, but that it still plans to continue with its unveiling on the same date at an unnamed location. Local church leaders have banded together to oppose the statue and declared their intent to organize a protest on the same day that the state is revealed. They keep calling it a state. I don't know. That's the second time they use the word state in this uh, RT story when I think they mean statue. Probably, and it's one of those things to where if you misspell it, spell check spell isn't check going catch to it. tell you that you spelled it yeah. wrong because state is a word. Pastor David Bullock of the St. Uh, Matthew pa- Baptist Church told Christian Today, quote, The last thing we need in a city where we're fighting against violence and fighting against economic problems and unemployment and the water crisis is a statue dedicated to Satan right downtown. He further added, quote, they're bringing a Baphomet statue to the city of Detroit, valorizing, elevating Satan. This is not even a real religion in my estimation, he said. Is the Church of Satan a real religion? I don't know. I've not looked into whatever their doctrine is. I don't know if they have a doctrine other than... Let's give people a hard time and make fun of stuff. I should clarify. I actually I misspoke there. I said the Church of Satan when I meant the Satanic Temple. They are two different uh, Satanic churches. So the Church of Satan, I believe, is a Levian uh, Satanist, if I'm not mistaken. I and then, have no clue. You know more about this than I do. Yeah. Well, Anton LaVey wrote the Satanic Bible, and that's sort of the book of the Church of Satan, from my understanding. And uh, and now you've got the Satanic Temple. And maybe they are on board with the uh, Levian Satanism. I don't really know. But the the news we've read about them in the past, the interviews, have suggested that they seem to exist for the purpose of trolling. That that's basically that they're atheists, that many of them are actually atheists and not, in point of fact, worshipers of Satan. And that they're just trying to mess with, uh, you know, some of the Christian churches. Right. So just call yourselves like, you know, the Association of Atheists. Well, but then they wouldn't be able to claim that they were a religion, right? So if you're an atheist, one of the things you can't generally do is 
be religious you know, by virtue of the fact that you are an atheist. So if the atheists say that they're Satanists and they sort of put on that cloak of Satan, if you will, then they would have the ability to get this thing located next to the Ten Commandments. I don't know. I, I think that you know someone could start the Church of Atheism, and like the, it, it would be interesting seeing their doctrines. Yeah. But you know, like they could certainly try it. They they would be as legitimate of you know a church as the temple of Satan that doesn't actually worship Satan. But maybe, well, I don't know what they claim. It's been a while since I've been to the temple's website. We can pull that up if necessary. But meanwhile, the temple has marked the occasion as a special one, saying it will serve as a call to arms for the group to begin a fight, quote, in the name of individual rights to free exercise against self-serving theocrats, unquote. A recent story by Vice News highlighted one aspect of this battle, describing the group's effort to challenge the laws restricting abortion on the grounds that such regulations actually violate a temple member's First Amendment right to freedom of religion. According to Vice, the temple believes that an individual's body is invaluable, and therefore only he or she can decide what to do with it, because the group also believes a fetus is not a person, but rather, quote, tissue that belongs to a woman, unquote. It's up to the woman and not the state to determine whether or not to keep it. Now, that's a whole other discussion, and I do tend to lean more on the side of uh, th that particular belief. I imagine you might disagree with me on that, Daryl. But uh, well, I if we're talking about you know just should abortion be legal, mm -hmm. I would say yes. Although I do think that there should be more educational outreach to try to dissuade people from having abortions. Right. So, you know, like, I, I know that there are some people that, you know, they're like abortion should be legal and encouraged and like advocate abortion. But I, I don't think that, you know, that's something that people should do, but they should not go to jail or be threatened with death for wanting to do it. You would rather use persuasion yes. rather than the threat of the violence of the state to persuade people to come to the same conclusions that you have. Yes. And that's truly and the libertarian— I don't want taxpayer money right. being spent for either the education or the actual uh, procedures. Yeah, and that's, that's truly the libertarian viewpoint is— you know, hey, it's really none of my business, but here's my opinion. If you'd like, I'd like you to agree with it. That's more of the, the libertarian persuasion. Also, you can persuade with money, too. You can try to convince somebody with logic, or you can also say, hey, look, lady, we'll buy your fetus, or, you know, right. we'll buy the baby when it's when it comes out, or, or we'll give you a cash incentive to have it. So that would be another persuasive means that isn't really uh, speaking to the person. Right. Much. So you find somebody that is looking to have a child, but for some reason can't get pregnant, and you connect them that with somebody that is pregnant yeah. but doesn't want a child. And then you you know try to work out some kind of deal to where you're like, all right, Lady A that's pregnant, you have the baby, and then you give it to Lady B. Mm -hmm. and, and collect done. a check for your trouble. Because it's costly, right, to go through the process of having a baby, tests and doctors and birthing and all of that. It's costly. There are cheaper ways to do it with, like, home births and things like that right. and avoiding the sort of the, the mainstream medical, what do you call it, a mainstream medical apparatus, I guess, uh, to right. kind of keep yourself out of that. Uh, that would bring costs down, but still, it's expensive. So generally, if you want to persuade somebody to have a baby, you want to cover all of their medical costs uh, in that process and give them a little something on top for the nine months of their life that they weren't able to live in the normal way that right. they, would, they would work. Um, so those are all persuasive means, and, and I support persuasion as opposed to the use of violence to change people's minds on things. So I don't know. How do you feel about the Satanic Temple here? And, and not just you, Daryl, but you, the listener, uh, on what they're up to. You can share your thoughts here with us toll free at 855 450 free. Not just whether or not they actually believe in Satan, but, you know, uh, just the, their approach, the way they're handling things. Is this something that, you know, should they be able to do this? I think they should. I think that if there is one religion that is going to be allowed, then all of the religions have to be allowed at a state. Uh, property. They, Florida has this thing that every Christmas they have like a state Christmas display and they have to allow everybody to come in, including the church, uh, the Temple of Satan, and the, including uh, the, uh, the Spaghetti Monster, the Flying Spaghetti Monster Church. 
they have had a, a display. Oh, the, uh, the Pastafarian. That's right. They've had a display in the the state of Florida, Rotunda, or whatever they call it. So, you know, they have to either allow all or none. You can share your thoughts with us here at 855-450 free. And, you know, to their credit, it's a nice looking statue. 855-450 free. There's more coming up here in moments. And maybe we'll learn a little bit more about the Satanic Temple and or the Baphomet symbol in the first place. 855-450 free. We've got Skype too. Skype username is LRN.FM or you can bring up whatever you want on Free Talk Live. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a block at Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Do 
join us here on Free Talk Live. Moments remain, enough time for you if you dial now to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we do this thing seven nights a week, so if you don't get in tonight, that's okay. We'll do it tomorrow and the day after that. 7 to 10 Eastern, that's our live times. You can join us then and online in the meantime, of course, over at freetalklive.com. I should mention that if you would like to uh, help out Free Talk Live, you can become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. Get signed up for 5 bucks a month. We'll invest that into the show, getting on more radio stations all around the world and the country and exposing new people to the ideas of freedom. So once again, go to amp.freetalklive.com and thank you in advance for doing so. We're talking about the Satanic Temple, and uh, there's a frequently asked questions on their website, Daryl. I'm glad you were able to find their website because I was not. Their website is thesataniktemple.com. And uh, frequently asked question number one, do you worship Satan? Seems like the obvious first question here. The answer from the Satanic Temple is, it quote, is the position of the Satanic Temple that religion can and should be divorced from superstition. As such, we do not promote a belief in a personal Satan. To embrace the name Satan is to embrace rational inquiry removed from supernaturalism and archaic tradition-based superstitions. The Satanists, they say, should actively work to hone critical thinking and exercise reasonable agnosticism in all things. Our beliefs must be malleable to the best current scientific understandings of the material world, never the reverse. So they should really call themselves the Church of the Militant Atheist Who Believe in Science. Church of the Skeptic, perhaps? No, because it doesn't sound like they're being skeptical if they believe in science, because science is not skepticism. It's believing what you see, not questioning the results. Skepticism well, no, is, is questioning things. Well, no, I mean, science historically has been about questioning the results. Right, but I mean, not modern science. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is modern science, you are not allowed to question what science says. Science wow. says that by 2015, the wow. sea levels are going so. to rise 20 feet. And if you question that, then y no. you are a science denier. Uh, okay. Well, there may be some people, Daryl, who come at things from that perspective of having determined what they believe the truth is and then... You know, basically shunning anything else outside of if that. If you question science, you deny science. No, sir. That is the definition of science is to question things. That's what science is all about. But Whenever that's some... not what advocates of quote unquote science today are advocating. Well, I don't think that. First They're of all, advocating... you're collectivizing. You're, you are unfairly collectivizing. There are a lot of people out there who would disagree with you, who would say, yes, I'm a scientist. And yes, by definition of being a scientist means that I question things. That okay, well, you, you question that you, you know the, you the come up with the hypothesis. The vast majority of people that I know that say that they believe in science, yeah, get really upset if you question something that they are advocating. There's no doubt that there has sort of become and this. Science is supposed to be you question and then right. you try to figure out ways to support your argument and not, this is the thing and if you question me then you deny science i agree with you that's not what science is supposed to be but that's what it's become you're again collectivizing no that you know the definition of science is still this sort of robust questioning process where even when something seems to be scientifically accepted amongst more most of the scientific community there are still these people within science who understand that it's their job to continue to question that if somebody comes up with some sort of conclusion that they're the first thing they should do as a good scientist is say let's see if we can poke holes in that right. let's see if we can find a problem with this particular theory and then they go and they try to poke holes cuz that's good science right that way the more hole poking is going on the more closer we can get to some sort of uh, approximation of what the truth about the universe is from a scientific perspective right so you know not all science believers are religious like science believers that you're describing right where science has become a religion and there are certain scientists who are uh the preachers and that whatever they say is gold and you know it shall not be questioned there's no doubt that there are people like that that call themselves scientists or pro science or whatever but to say that that's the way it is across the board is unfair. I didn't unfair. say every science person. I said the vast majority that I have encountered. Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, but, you know, science isn't dead just because you've encountered some people that, that have that particular viewpoint. 
science is still alive and well. There's still people questioning studies and running studies to counter other studies and so on and so forth, right? That's still happening. To yes. a small degree. It's nowhere wow. near as much as what it should be. Okay. Well, then you should be a scientist then. No. <laughs> Number two on their frequently asked questions at the Satanic Temple. And by the way, you know, the question about do you worship Satan, I wonder if there's some really upset actual Satanists out there. Like the people that you never hear about them. There must be people out there that actually do worship Satan, that actually have some sort of black mass that they're conducting. There's and, probably like three of them. Yeah, there probably aren't very many, but I imagine they're pretty upset about the all the attention the Satanic Temple is getting when in their frequently asked questions they say they don't even worship Satan. Question number two, do you promote evil? Answer, the Satanic Temple holds to the basic premise that undue suffering is bad and that which reduces suffering is good. We do not believe in symbolic evil. We embrace blasphemy as a legitimate expression of personal independence from counterproductive traditional norms. And I got to say that, you know, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of tradition out there. I think a lot of it is very, very silly, uh, but it doesn't, it's not a threat to me or anything like that. So it doesn't bug me too much. I, I'm curious because they say that, like, they reject religion in their first answer but then they say but we believe in blasphemy and blasphemy is going against religious doctrine so how do you reject religion and then say that you are promoting going against their doctrines at the same time like hey, it seems to me that they're just like using words that they think sound good yeah i think you're right about that because it doesn't say right here that they reject religion it says that religion can and should be divorced from superstition and i'm I guess what they're saying is is that those other religions are superstitious, but our satanic temple is divorced from superstition, and we are scientist types, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So sort of creating a religion out of science in some way, maybe. Right. So they should be the church of militant atheist scientists. Let's talk to Rob. He's in Lynchburg, Virginia. Rob, listening to WLNI. Hello there. Hey, guys. I love the show. Um, this temple has got to be full of liberals, okay? Number one, it's a satanic temple that doesn't worship Satan. Is that like, you know, the Islamic state that's not Islamic? Mm, that's a good point. That's crazy. And the second thing, liberals do this, the, the, the argument you had about science and modern science, quote unquote, is exactly the same thing again. It's liberals. Okay, Liberals have corrupted science. You don't have anyone that you don't have any conservative political science where people try to uh, do science by. Uh, by oh a yeah, you do. There's those churches what? that are like, um, what are they? No, not churches, but there's uh, particular creationism or whatever. There's these people out there that try to use science to show that uh, the world was created by God, and they've just got some ridiculous junk science that. Uh, that they're pushing. Okay, no, no, I'm not saying that there's not junk science on anything, but w what what the other host was saying was the new science, which is a political bullying thing that says if you don't believe, you can't question anything. If you don't believe the orthodoxy, it's science by consensus, which is exactly anti-scientific. I would agree with you on that that statement for sure. And that, but what I'm saying with that, that whole thing, global warming is the, the keystone to all that. It's like if you don't believe in our religious global warming thing. And we signed up 2,000 scientists. That's how you prove something is true, not by observation, not by the scientific method we all lived in, learned in junior high. But you just line up 3,000 people and sign a paper and say, okay, well, we voted, yeah. and science is now this. And Yeah, that's no good. That's and I horrible. really want to believe Liberal in global today. warming, by the way. I really want to believe in it. But unfortunately, all the evidence shows, uh, at least to me, that we just had the coldest damn winter uh, on record here in, uh, in New Hampshire. Okay, so I, I can <laughs> prove global warming in one sentence. There used to be an ice age. Now there isn't. Well, an ice age, okay. what? You mean the, the one there they were predicting for the no future? Ice. No, like 10,000 years ago, there was an ice age. Oh, I see what you're saying. Now there's not an the, ice age. The globe that has means warmed. the globe has warmed. <laughs> yeah. It okay. gets colder, it gets warmer. Like, there there's cycles that happen. Right. And that predates industrial carbon uh, fossil fuel. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Now, 
the yeah, whole but, every time the temperature goes up by any amount, it's all because man did it. That's absolute BS. But yeah, yeah, you know, like there there are cycles, weather cycles that happens. We know that that happens right. because there used to be an ice age and now there's not. Rob, thanks but for the call the tonight, man. We are yeah, short I on see. time. Call tomorrow if you want to chat more. We appreciate it. And I wish we could have gotten through more of this uh, Satanic Temple's frequently asked questions here because there's actually a question on here. Is the Satanic Temple a media stunt slash hoax slash trolling, etc.? <laughs> so you can check it out on your own volition. At your leisure. We'll see you tomorrow night. Freetalklive.com. Check out Daryl's website, fpp.cc. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, July 11th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.61 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,163 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $293. Antiwar.com reports fighting picked up early Friday in Yemen with the hours leading up to the ceasefire, which began at 23.59 local time, seeing several clashes inside several major cities, including Taiz. Then the ceasefire began, and almost immediately thereafter, Saudi warplanes were attacking Taiz. Reports are that Saudi airstrikes against Taiz began less than an hour after the ceasefire began, with three different strikes reported hitting Houthi targets, including a camp and a military convoy. Pro-Saudi fighters had claimed the Houthis were violating the ceasefire by continuing to advance into the city once it began, and suggesting that was the pretext for the Saudi strike. Saudi officials were spurning the truce before it even began, insisting they did not trust the Houthis to honor it. The Houthis, for their part, insisted that they were holding their ground in Taiz against an offensive by pro-Saudi forces, and the airstrikes compounded on that truce violation. The UN is urging both sides to honor the ceasefire, and despite these incidents, strikes appear to have halted across most of the country. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports Office of Personnel Management Director Catherine Archuleta resigned on Friday amid growing criticism over her handling of a massive data breach that resulted in the theft of personal information from millions of people. Archuleta, the director since November 2013, personally submitted her letter of resignation Friday morning to President Obama, saying new leadership was needed at the Federal Personnel Agency to move beyond the current challenges. The president accepted her resignation. Archuleta said in a statement, Today, I inform the OPM workforce that I am stepping down as the leader of this remarkable agency and the remarkable people who work for it. This morning, I offered and the president accepted my resignation as the director of the Office of Personnel Management. I conveyed to the president that I believe it is best for me to step aside and allow new leadership to step in, enabling the agency to move beyond the current challenges and allowing the people at OPM to continue their important work. Beth Cobert, the Deputy Director of Management at the Office of Management and Budget, will fill in temporarily until a replacement is found. On Thursday, the Office of Personnel Management announced the data breach in late 2014 was more extensive than first thought, saying information from 21.5 million people were compromised in addition to the personal data of 4.2 million current and former federal employees. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports, a divided Ohio appeals court panel on Friday said it would not force a municipal judge to issue arrest warrants for Cleveland police officers involved in the fatal shooting of 12-year-old Tamir Rice in a city park last November. A group of community activists who have sought to bring charges against the officers directly through a little-known Ohio law had asked the 8th District Court of Appeals to compel the judge to issue arrest warrants in the case. Cleveland Municipal Court Judge Ronald Adrien in June found probable cause for Officer Timothy Lohman, who shot Rice and his partner, Frank Garnbach, to face charges in the shooting. Appellate Court Judge Frank Calabrese Jr. wrote in the 2-1 to one ruling denying their request that the community leaders could ask a higher court to review Adrien's decision. Judge Anita Mays said Adrien should have been compelled to issue the warrants. Lohman shot Rice twice within seconds of arriving outside.